Chapter 221 Group Fighting Law Enforcers Translator Born to be the instant Long Chen arrived at this law enforcer station, he saw little snow on his last breaths. His fury immediately exploded and his killing intent almost made him combust. Wu Qi was actually planning on killing Little Snow. Long Chen's killing intent turned practically solid and he charged forward, his bone blade slashing down on Wu Qi. Wu Qi had never imagined that outsiders would appear at his station. Outsiders were not permitted in the law enforcer stations. Long Chen's practically solid killing intent immediately locked him in place. Wu Qi was alarmed and hastily raised his sword. Bang! The bone blade heavily collided with the sword. A violent force erupted like a volcano. Wu Qi immediately was forced back by that terrifying force. Only then did he have a chance to see who it was. Long Chen, how brazen. You dare intrude on the law enforcer's station. Wu Qi was first shocked, but then delighted to see Long Chen. Since the monastery's rules didn't permit disciples to barge into the law enforcer's stations, Long Chen had violated the rules. Long Chen's arrival also shocked the other two law enforcers. They had never thought Long Chen would come find them. They all knew this scarlet flame snow wolf was Long Chen's mound, and that was why they had brought it back secretly. Seeing Long Chen arrive, the other two coldly snorted and charged at Long Chen, wanting to noiselessly capture Long Chen. But the two of them had only just moved forward when a giant man smashed a huge club at them. You bastards. Fuck off. That club brought with it a fierce gale, and space trembled to the point where it was hard to breathe. The two of them were horrified and hastily raised their weapons but the two of their weapons shattered apart in front of that club and both of them shot back dozens of meters before managing to stabilize again. The two of them looked at that person with horror. That person was wild. Seeing how miserable Little Snow's condition was, Wild's eyes had turned red. He now smashed his club at Wu Qi. Wu Qi was also indescribably shocked. He didn't sense any aura from Wild's body, but his power was too terrifying. Wu Qi didn't dare be the slightest bit careless. His entire aura exploded out. His peak mid-tendon transformation cultivation base was pushed to its max as he slashed his sword at Wild. Sparks flew when their two weapons collided. Wu Qi's sword wasn't an ordinary weapon and didn't shatter, but he himself was unable to withstand Wild's ferocious power and was forced back several steps, feeling his arm turn a bit numb. What terrifying strength. Wu Qi was greatly alarmed. Wild didn't pause the slightest after that attack and ferociously smashed his club at him again. As for the other two law enforcers, only now did they recover from their shock. Taking out their law enforcer chains, they charged at Long Chen. Long Chen was staring at Little Snow. At this time, Little Snow opened his eyes. Although he was unable to move his body, his eyes were filled with warmth. That gaze caused Long Chen's heart to bleed. Even the bone blade in his hand was quivering. An enormous killing intent was storming within him. Those two law enforcers were about to reach him when hundreds of people suddenly rushed over. Guo Ran immediately saw Little Snow's state as well as Long Chen who was on the verge of going berserk. His fury soared at how vicious and hateful these bastards were and he shouted, Brothers, charge, beat these bastards to death. Seeing this scene, even Tang Wan Er and Ye's Hikyu's killing intent sword, charge, kill these immoral bastards, fuck these corrupt law enforcers, they really deserve death. This kind of trash are also law enforcers? The monastery really has been blind. Let's clean up the monastery ourselves. Seeing this scene, how could they not understand what was going on? Just what kind of heroic figure was Long Chen? Seeing his body quivering from rage, they could all see how much pain he was in from seeing Little Snow like this. This group of law enforcers really were degenerates, and so everyone's fury was immediately ignited. Originally, everyone had only been in the mood for a good fight, but now they wanted to destroy these bastards. They all took out their weapons and charged at those two law enforcers. Those two law enforcers turned pale, for five core disciples to immediately charge them. They were both shocked and angered. What nerve? Are you planning on rebelling? Fuck your mom. Luo Kang's character was the most frank, and he directly cursed them. His staff took the vanguard in smashing at that law enforcer. Following Luo Kang, the rest of them also didn't wait, giving them a greeting with their weapons. One reason they attacked so fiercely was because of their extreme hatred for these bastards, but the other reason was because they knew their senior apprentice brothers were powerful experts in the mid-tendon transformation realm. If they didn't attack with their full strength, they'd be the ones to lose. Long Chen, go look after Little Snow. Tang wan -er saw that Long Chen's body was quivering from uncontrollable anger, but first he should go save Little Snow. After giving him that reminder, 
Tang Wan'er summoned a wind blade into her hand and joined the fighting. The Heaven Earth Alliance's people were all crazily besieging those two law enforcers. Despite being in the mid-tendon transformation realm, they were unprepared to handle so many people and their movements were a mess. On the other side was Wild smashing his club like a madman. His crazy attacks against Wu Qi caused him to constantly retreat. The crowd of people behind the Heaven Earth Alliance also arrived at this time. Seeing this chaotic battle scene, they were all stupefied. Wild was especially crazy, like some kind of barbarian god. His club was unstoppable and he was not at all inferior to Wu Qi. That was the first time any of them saw how terrifying Wild was. Without the slightest bit of aura, he could fight with just his powerful physical body. Gu Yang, who had just arrived, couldn't help sighing when he saw how powerful Wild was. Ever since he had started cultivating, he had always been unmatched in terms of brute strength. But now Wild's practically divine strength caused him to realize what it meant that a hill could not compare to a large mountain. The previous him had really just been a frog at the bottom of a well. Wu Qi was a squad leader amongst law enforcers, and his cultivation base was top-notch amongst them at the peak of the mid-tendon transformation realm. His combat strength was without equal, but he was repeatedly forced back purely by brute power. That really was shocking. As the others fought, Long Chen took a couple deep breaths. He forced himself to calm down and hastily ran over to Little Snow. Little Snow, don't be afraid. I'm here. I won't let you suffer anymore. Long Chen couldn't help feeling incomparable pain. Little Snow was covered with wounds. Looking at those scars was more painful than if he was being whipped. Woo. Little Snow quietly called out, wanting to express something, but he didn't have that much energy. Here, swallow this. Long Chen took out a pearl from his spatial ring. That was the gift the spirit world expert had left for him. The pearl contained a vast amount of life essence. Previously, when Wild had been tortured the point of having just a single breath left and was on the verge of death, it was this pearl that had pulled him back from the hands of the Grim Reaper. This time, although Little Snow was covered in injuries, his life wasn't actually in danger. He had simply lost too much blood and energy, and so he was temporarily extremely weak. Such wounds could be slowly healed through normal means, but Long Chen couldn't wait for that. For Little Snow, he once more took out this precious treasure. He directly took out a drop of that precious divine life essence from the pearl. That pearl immediately shrunk. Hear Little Snow, swallow this. Hearing Long Chen's voice, Little Snow pitifully did his best to open his mouth, but did not succeed. Long Chen had no choice but to pull open his mouth and place that drop of life essence into his mouth. Only after he sensed that drop of life essence nourishing Little Snow's body did he relax. Gently rubbing Little Snow's head, he consoled. Sleep. We won't have to part again. Long Chen used his spiritual strength to put Little Snow to sleep. The main thing was that Little Snow was too weak now. Seeing Long Chen caused him to immediately relax, and so he easily entered a deep slumber. Long Chen looked around and saw Yu Zifeng amongst the crowd. After the struggle over the profound spirit fruit, he had never had any further interactions with him. Although they weren't friends, they also couldn't count as enemies. Brother Yu, help me out. Call over some of your people to protect this little fellow for now, asked Long Chen. Yu Zifeng was startled, but he nodded. Don't worry brother Long, I'll definitely protect him properly. Yu Zifeng hadn't expected Long Chen to have such trust in him that he would place his mount temporarily in his care. He immediately waved out to the people behind him and around 50 people walked out and formed a protective ring around Little Snow. While Long Chen had been healing Little Snow's wounds, the fight had reached its climax. Being surrounded and attacked by everyone, those law enforcers were already completely enraged facing those people who didn't even seem afraid of death. The both of them also began to use some ruthless attacks. Quite a few people were forced back, coughing up blood. The difference between them was difficult to make up. The ordinary disciples had just stepped into the tendon transformation realm, and couldn't even count as having reached the first heaven stage. They were much weaker than their mid-tendon transformation senior apprentice brothers, other than the core disciples who could just barely face off against them. The rest of them would immediately be sent flying as soon as they collided with their chains. That was the difference between the two parties. If you guys still don't learn how to appreciate our kindness, don't blame us for being ruthless. We could easily kill you all one by one. You should know that you've violated the monastery's rules. Even if we kill you all, we won't receive any punishment. Raged one of the law enforcers. Fuck your rules. Shut your hole. We don't want your crap. You bastards can go to hell. Although there were occasionally some of them who were forced back with injuries. 
there was not one of them who shrunk back. They all continued attacking ferociously. Their companions' injuries didn't cause them to feel fear, but further provoked their fighting spirit. The Watchers also felt their blood boiling. What were companions? What were brothers? What did it mean for you to give your back to others? They all finally understood why Long Chen had been set on killing those traitors, why he would not allow any betrayal. Such a fierce fight where their fellows were unafraid of death caused all of them to be moved. Only absolute conviction could lead to such a terrifying combat strength. Now that Little Snow was carefully guarded, Long Chen nodded to Yu Zifeng in thanks. This way he could fight at ease. His bone blade once more appeared in his hands. He saw that Wild was still fiercely fighting. It didn't seem as if he could defa a Turing Wu Qi, but for the moment, he was in no danger. But the other battle was extremely intense, with people being injured and flying out, unable to continue. Long Chen's eyes reddened. Those were his brothers. He charged forward at one of those law enforcers, his bone blade slashing down on his head. Chapter 222 Abusive Authorities Translator Born to be one law enforcer was surrounded by Song Mingyuan, Li Qi, and Luo Kang. There were also tens of ordinary disciples launching attacks when they saw openings, infuriating the law enforcer. His chain whistled through the air and the power of a mid-tendon transformation expert exploded out, forcing everyone to retreat. The difference between him and the new generation's disciples was too great. Even Song Mingyuan and the other core disciples were forced back when his chain struck their weapons, causing their arms to ache. They were simply not on the same level. The three battlefields were extremely different. One battlefield was where Wild was fighting Wu Qi alone. As the battle progressed he began fighting stronger and stronger, never entering a disadvantage. As for Tang Wanner and Ye's Hikyu, the two of them managed to hold down another law enforcer on their own. Although it was extremely taxing, they were still able to endure. But Song Mingyuan's group had entered a dangerous state. They had the most injured people and they might be defeated at any moment. That caused them to angrily persevere. The other disciples also didn't slack off. When one person was sent flying, another would immediately take his place. And unless the injuries were so severe that they couldn't even crawl up, no one retreated. A group of idiots. You guys are asking for death. That law enforcer was infuriated at being besieged from all sides. Although he said he wouldn't receive any blame for killing them. Did he really dare kill them? They were not entirely free from fault. They had captured someone else's mound. If they ended up killing people who had come to take vengeance for that, they would not be able to escape their punishment. But in his fury, although he didn't dare kill anyone, he was happy to give them extremely harsh injuries. His chain whistled through the air, immediately forcing back everyone. There were several disciples who were hit and sent flying, coughing out blood. Fuck off. That law enforcer angrily roared very impressively. But he only just roared when he suddenly felt a cold. Terrifying killing intent lock him in place, making him feel as if he had entered an ice house. A bone blade that appeared as if it had come from the depths of hell to take his life stabbed right at his face. That tricky angle was extremely ruthless. That bone blade's power had been condensed greatly. That law enforcer knew that if he took that attack, his head would immediately explode. He wants to kill me. That law enforcer was horrified. This attack was extremely simple and direct. He wanted to kill him in just one blow. He quickly stepped back, bringing his chain up to block the bone blade. But what appalled him was that his chain which could easily force back a core disciple's attack was unable to shake that bone blade at all. The bone blade merely paused ever so slightly before continuing down, its speed shockingly fast as it reached his forehead. His soul almost fled his body in fright, his heart almost leaping out of his chest. He frantically twisted his head to the side, although he managed to avoid being killed. That bone blade still left behind a line of blood on his forehead. If he hadn't instinctively turned his head at that last moment, that bone blade would have penetrated straight through his skull. The arrival of that bone blade had been extremely shocking to all. In one blow it narrowly missed killing a law enforcer, giving Song Mingyuan and them a shock. Long Chen, they didn't know when he had come, but now he was amongst them, pointing his bone blade at that horrified law enforcer. Long Chen's face was icy cold now, and yet... His eyes were completely calm, a deathly kind of calm. That kind of calm was even more terrifying. That law enforcer who was being stared at felt his heart might stop. Long Chen suddenly disappeared, appearing before the law enforcer again, his bone blade directly aiming for his neck. Long Chen's appearance caused Song Mingyuan and them to all stop. They felt that if they did go now, not only would that not help, but they might obstruct him. It was better for them to leave the vanguard to Long Chen. 
Furthermore Long Chen's attack was filled with an unstoppable killing intent. It was completely different from their fighting style. They wouldn't be able to intervene in any case. The most exciting thing about Long Chen's fight was that domineering manner of his. That sight caused their blood to boil. That law enforcer almost just ran for his life when he saw Long Chen charging at him. His courage had already been broken. Just now he had almost died. Although he had cultivated for this long, other than that trial to join the monastery, he had never experienced any true life and death battles. But Long Chen was not the same. He had fought his way back from the brink of death many times. His powerful will and his accumulated killing spirit caused his opponents to turn cold, greatly affecting that ability to fight. If a person was affected by Long Chen's imposingness and ended up feeling intense terror in their heart, then they would be unable to even bring out their full power. That was also why the life and death trial to join the monastery had been arranged. It was to firm everyone's wills, allowing them to hopefully display more strength in life and death battles. But just one life and death battle was far from enough to completely firm a person's will. They weren't like Long Chen who had continuously faced death in the face. Only through that tempering had he gained an unyielding will that would disdainfully look down on the threat of death. That law enforcer brought up his chain, but it was brushed away by Long Chen's blade. Long Chen took another step, twisted his body, bringing his blade arcing to his waist. His courage had already been broken by Long Chen's murderous spirit. All he could do was defend without daring to attack. Long Chen's twisting cut was a continuation on his previous move. The angle was extremely strange, and it was precisely where the law enforcer couldn't bring forth much strength. No matter how he defended, he would be unable to completely block this one. Under normal circumstances, he should have been able to use his chain to block and then retreat. Even if his chains weren't able to entirely block him, his speed was enough that he would have been likely to get away. And furthermore, even if he wasn't able to dodge, Long Chen's bone blade was a beast's tooth. Other than the point, it wasn't sharp anywhere else. If he actually blocked and dodged properly, it would be impossible for it to give him any heavy injuries. But his courage had already been broken by Long Chen's first attack. His mind was empty of everything except terror. He wasn't thinking at all about how Long Chen's weapon wasn't sharp enough. He knew Long Chen wanted to kill him. To him, being hit by Long Chen's blade would cause him to immediately be cut in half. In his panic he had already become stupid, forgetting how to dodge and block properly. Long Chen's bone blade ruthlessly smashed into that law enforcer's rib cartilage, bringing with it a miserable scream and the sound of bones breaking as he was sent flying. That stupefied everyone. That powerful law enforcer was unable to endure 10 exchanges against Long Chen before being severely injured. Those people watching could all see that it wasn't because Long Chen's combat strength was high, but because that law enforcer had been completely suppressed by Long Chen's imposing manner. His cultivation base had already been oppressed to below 80%, and adding on his fear and nervousness that led to his mistakes in judgment, he was easily defeated by Long Chen. Everyone's heart shook. Long Chen used his own actions to tell everyone a certain rule. A higher cultivation base didn't necessarily mean you were stronger. The person with the higher cultivation base wouldn't always win. Long Chen had managed to win while being weaker, but that also wasn't entirely true. Although his cultivation base was weaker, he had his unstoppable mannerism, that resolution that was unafraid of death, and that powerful conviction in his complete victory. Previously, none of these disciples understood what exactly what an imposing mannerism, resolution, or conviction really were. They were just vague concepts. But Long Chen's display today showed everyone just how important those concepts were. Gu Yang, Lai Kai and Shang, Guan Wenan, and the other core disciples all finally understood why Long Chen was so strong. That was because of his powerful conviction, an unequaled conviction whose resolution could not be shaken by anyone. Even in the face of death, his conviction would not sway. That was one of the requirements to be a true expert. As for them, their family's elders had all imprinted upon them a false theory. That talent was the foundation to become an expert. No matter how good such a foundation was, without that drive to fight despite a thousand setbacks, without that conviction to become an expert that would not sway even in the face of death, you would forever be a greenhouse plant unable to endure a single night's frost. That law enforcer was a perfect example. He normally acted strong with such a lofty manner, but when it came to a true life and death juncture, his act of strength was completely shattered revealing how weak he really was, and completely opposite to him was Long Chen. He seemed so ordinary on the outside, not at all strong, but when it came time to truly risk it all, 
People would find that beneath that ordinary exterior was an iron will. Long Chen's display let them see another kind of future for themselves. Almost all the disciples felt their hearts become much clearer. They were filled with gratitude and respect for that incredibly imposing, practically celestial being. After sending that law enforcer flying, Long Chen suddenly appeared before him again, bringing his bone blade down on his head. What? Everyone was greatly shocked now. That law enforcer was so heavily wounded there was no way he could dodge. Long Chen was really planning on killing him. Stop. Suddenly a cold shout shook everyone's ears. A ray of black light smashed into Long Chen's bone blade that was about to kill that law enforcer. Long Chen felt a sharp pain in his arm and a powerful force sent him flying. His blood surged and he almost coughed up blood. Turning to look, he saw that at some point a furious Elder Sun had appeared before everyone. Elder Sun's arrival alarmed everyone and they all retreated. None of them had thought that they would have disturbed an elder so quickly. Tang Wan'er's heart sunk the instant she saw him. She had a bad feeling now. Elder Sun pointed at Long Chen and shouted, At such a young age you are already so vicious. How are you any different from corrupt devils? If I don't suppress you a bit today, how will we keep the natural order of things? A heavy pressure immediately spread from his body, covering everyone. It was difficult for them to even breath under his pressure, and they even felt their bones might break under it. The ordinary disciples were already pale, blood dripping out of the corner of some of their mouths. But all of them held firm, refusing to submit to that pressure. Long Chen, you've brazenly mustered a group to fight the law enforcers. Such an offense cannot be forgiven. Hurry up and kneel. Elder Sun's pressure gathered entirely on Long Chen, causing him to immediately feel as if a mountain was crushing him. Icy cold killing intent filled Long Chen's eyes. Looking at the sanctimonious Elder Sun, he slowly raised the bone blade in his hand. Outrageous. You actually dare rebel. Elder Sun raged. He was about to continue increasing the pressure when he felt a wind at the back of his head. Old stick. Go die. A huge spiked club smashed at Elder Sun's head. Chapter 223 No rest until death translator. Born to be following an angry roar. A huge spiked club smashed towards the back of Elder Sun's head. That completely surprised Elder Sun under his pressure. There shouldn't have been anyone capable of moving. Not even the core disciples. Without turning his head, he punched out behind him. But what was even more shocking to him was that this attack was so powerful that he was actually forced back a couple steps. He hastily turned to see that it was some giant fellow holding a huge club glaring at him. It seemed as if his pressure didn't have any effect of this fellow. Furthermore, that previous blow had been completely abnormal. Capable of even forcing him. A bone forging expert. Back a couple steps. Who are you? Elder Sun didn't recognize this person. Who are you my ass? You old crap. You dare bully my brother Long? Eat my club Wild roared and smashed his club down on Elder Sun again. Rude brat. Elder Sun's expression changed. He had given him some courtesy because he was afraid he was a disciple of some elder. That would have been troublesome. But he hadn't thought this brat would insult him like this. And his fury exploded. Boom. Wild let out a muffled shout as he was sent flying. He directly smashed apart a huge boulder in the distance. But what shocked everyone was that despite receiving such a powerful blow. Wild wasn't injured at all. He got up from the ground and once more charged forward with his club. Elder Sun was about to retaliate when suddenly he felt a whistling gale on the other side going for his neck. Long Chen had actually also attacked him at this moment. This time everyone really was stupefied. He actually attacked an elder? Did he not care about his life anymore? Bastards. Elder Sun roared and a powerful surge of invisible energy sent both Long Chen and Wild flying. This is the power of bone forging? How terrifying. People muttered to themselves. It was said when cultivators stepped into the bone forging realm, their spiritual key could be released outside as pressure. Without even moving your body, it was possible to just use that pressure to crush your opponents to death. But that was also something that was only possible when a bone forging expert's cultivation base had reached an extremely solidified level. The secular world's bone forging experts were unable to do that. Even with Long Chen and Wild's power, they were unable to resist that pressure. Violating the rules and then daring to resist. You really are asking for death. Elder Sun harshly shouted. Long Chen felt his blood surging in his body. A bone forging expert really was too terrifying. He was far from being a match for him. Elder Sun, please try to distinguish right and wrong first. Don't wrongly accuse others before investigating the truth. Tang Wan'er angrily shouted. Her whole body trembling from rage. Last time Elder Sun had intentionally targeting Long Chen, and now he was even more directly suppressing him. 
That really was hateful. HMPH. You're doubting my eyes? I personally saw you all muster and attack the law enforcers, viciously injuring them. You still want to quibble, snorted Elder Sun Yu. Wanner, don't waste words with this old bastard. Since he wants to target me, let me make this a bit more exciting. Long Chen cut Tang Wanner off, as that was useless. He was clearer than anyone here as to what this old bastard was thinking. In front of everyone's puzzled eyes, Long Chen took out his disciple badge. Using his bone blade, he cut along across his left hand, leaving a line of blood. He then placed that bleeding hand on the badge, causing dazzling light to immediately shine from it. A resounding bell sound rang out throughout every inch of the Zhuanshan Monastery. What? Long Chen issued a life and death challenge. People let out startled cries. The monastery had a certain rule. If there were irreconcilable differences between two people, you could issue a life and death challenge. Once a life and death challenge was issued, the opposing party had to accept. If they didn't, they would be expelled from the monastery. That was an extremely odd rule, but it was precisely because it was so strange that Long Chen remembered it now. The way to issue it was to have your blood activate your badge. Once you did, the monastery's bell would alert everyone. Once that bell rang, his badge immediately became invalid. In other words, if he wanted to continue staying in the monastery, he must kill his opponent and snatch his badge. Elder Sun's expression changed. A life and death challenge would disturb the entire monastery, and as expected, countless people immediately began to rush over. Who issued the life and death challenge? Suddenly, space trembled as three figures abruptly appeared. One of them was sect leader Ling Yanzi. A life and death challenge was no small matter. If the sect leader wasn't in seclusion, he had to personally oversee it. Beside Ling Yanzi was Tu Fang as well as another thin, withered old man. He only had a couple strands of hair and his temples were caved in, giving him a frightening appearance. When that old man appeared, he immediately saw Wilde in his sorry position and his expression sunk. Little fellow, what happened to you? Tell master who bullied you and master will break his claws. Although that withered old man was small, his voice was like a drum, shaking the entire mountain. Several disciples turned pale and almost fainted. Such an unremarkable old man was shockingly so powerful, and he actually called the giant fellow his apprentice. Elder Sun's expression turned green when he heard that appellation. Terror appeared in his eyes, replacing that overbearing arrogance. Wild pointed to Elder Sun and raged. That old bastard didn't even listen about who was right and who was wrong before wrongly accusing my brother Long. I can't beat him. So old man, you helped me beat him. The old man was really infuriated now. He glared at Elder Sun, causing his face to turn from green to blue, and he stammered. Grand Uncle Master, I everyone's eyes popped out as that old man didn't even give Elder Sun a chance to explain and slapped him right in the face. Elder Sun immediately coughed up blood and flew back. Over ten teeth glittered through the air. His body collided on the immortal caves behind him, causing an avalanche of tumbling stones. Ling Yanzi sighed and bitterly smiled. Uncle Master, can you at least let people explain themselves? Hearing Ling Yanzi's words gave everyone a shock. So this unremarkable man was actually the sect leader's uncle master. It was no wonder Elder Sun was so terrified. His status was so high it was shocking. And it was also no wonder he was so strong. He had used some kind of unknown technique to give Elder Sun a slap despite the space separating the two of them. That was practically a magical technique. It wasn't even possible to see his attack, let alone dodge. People looked in shock from the old man to wild, and then Long Chen. This would be a good show now. What did you say? Just what kind of senior disciple are you? You let your junior disciples be bullied like this and don't do anything. So what if I give this brat a lesson? Are you all grown up and dare challenge your uncle master? Do you want to have some practice between us? Raged that old man. Ling Yanzi smiled bitterly. This uncle master's cultivation base was frightening, but his temperament was extremely explosive, perhaps even completely unreasonable. But he also refused to accept that shortcoming. So Ling Yanzi didn't dare keep talking. HMPH. Did you forget who saved you when you were bullied by that ghost gate brat? Ungrateful kid. The old man was still scolding. Ling Yanzi felt his face grow hot. Being scolded in front of this many people really was embarrassing. But he then remembered that whenever he had caused a disaster back then and was about to be punished by his master, it was always this uncle master who had saved him. Even when he suffered outside, it was this uncle master who had done everything to help him grow. In reality, he had doted on him even more than his master. This uncle master's cultivation base was incredibly powerful. 
Unfortunately his temperament wasn't so good. He was disinclined to even give others a glance. When Tu Fang had brought Wild back, this Uncle Master's eyes had immediately turned red and he had immediately grabbed Wild. He doted and pampered Wild crazily, giving him anything he wanted. But other than eating, Wild didn't want anything else. And so in order to let Wild eat to his full, he also stopped cultivating and brought Wild out of the monastery and personally brought him hunting, treating him like he was his own son. This time they had just returned to the monastery when Wild had heard Long Chen was also in the monastery, and he had rushed over. The old man had been in the midst of drinking tea with Ling Yunzi and Tu Fang, praising and applauding Wild's abnormal physical body, practically babbling non-stop. But he had only managed to babble for a while before Long Chen issued his life and death challenge. That had irritated him greatly. He had just reached the interesting part of his story. But he also knew a life and death challenge was a major affair and that the sect leader had to be present according to the monastery's rules. That was because it was something that related to their disciples' life and death. Normally such a challenge would rarely be issued. But if it was issued, that would mean there was an unerasable and unconcealable hatred between two parties. Just one or two disciples' deaths wouldn't be able to affect the monastery's development, but in order to prevent further similar situations, they had to be treated with the proper attention of the monastery. There was no way the rules could be absolutely perfect. People had to constantly adjust them to improve them. Otherwise, if people used loopholes in the rules and more and more of these conflicts appeared and grew more intense, that would influence the monastery's growth. The old man scolded some more. But seeing Ling Yunzi merely continued to smile, he also began to feel embarrassed. He turned to viciously glare at Elder Sun who had just crawled out of the stones. Ling Yunzi was afraid this uncle master would continue beating others, and he hastily coughed. Who issued the life and death challenge? This disciple, Long Chen walked forward. Seeing that it was Long Chen, Ling Yunzi and Tu Fang gave each other a furtive glance. They both saw what was written on the other's face. Of course it's him. Who did you issue the life and death challenge to? Disciple Long Chen issued the life and death challenge to law enforcer Wu Qi. With blood as my oath, I will not rest until one of us is dead. Long Chen raised his medal, his gaze glaring knives at Wu Qi. His voice was filled with a soaring killing intent. Today, one of them would die. Chapter 224 Death Deciding Stage Translator Born to be although everyone was already prepared for it. Hearing Long Chen's voice still greatly shocked everyone. He had actually issued a life and death challenge to a peak mid-tendon transformation expert. This was no ordinary challenge. Unless one party backed out, one of them had to die today. An icy smile appeared on Wu Qi's face. Long Chen was powerful, but in his eyes, Long Chen had never been an actual match for him. If it weren't for the monastery restricting him, he would have long since killed Long Chen. The fact that Long Chen would just send himself to be killed by him like this was a nice surprise. You have to think this through Long Chen. Once the life and death challenge is issued, one party will die. This isn't a game. If you feel you have received injustice or unfair treatment, you can make a complaint to me. Solemnly warned Ling Yunzi. A life and death challenge was something that was only to be issued when the differences had reached an irreconcilable level. Unless the hatred between the two parties had reached an extremely high level, no one would issue such a challenge. Ling Yunzi was worried. Although he was sure Long Chen was a divergent, a legendary existence that would only die beneath the heavenly deos, those were just legends. A divergent had not appeared in who knew how many tens of thousands of years, and even if one had appeared, no one would know about them. Only when those people were destroyed under a world eradicating divine punishment would people realize that they had been a divergent. But in all the recorded history, there had only ever been three definite divergents. Furthermore, they had existed so long ago that those recordings were very vague, and so no one could be sure of any exact details about divergence, and the legends could not be entirely trusted. Although Long Chen was powerful, in front of a peak mid-tendon transformation expert, he would definitely lose. And so that was why Ling Yunzi gave Long Chen this option to simply give him his complaints about any injustices. If Wu Qi really had abused his authority against him, he would get justice for Long Chen. Reporting to sect leader. What happened was Tang Wan Er quickly walked out and was about to explain what had happened. But Long Chen waved his hand. Great sect leader. In this world where only strength is respected, there is never any fairness or justice. Complaints of unfairness are just the excuses of the weak. Only confirming their own incompetence and foolishness. And since the world has no fairness, then we should use strength to speak. Please help me out great sect leader. Long Chen. 
Tang Wan'er's expression changed. He was clearly on the righteous side, but he refused to explain himself, stubbornly issuing this life and death challenge. That Wu Qi was a peak mid-tendon transformation expert, and Long Chen was definitely not his match. He was just sending himself to death. Tang Wan'er grumbled inside. Why was Long Chen sometimes so smart that people felt he was a sage, yet sometimes so foolish that nothing could save him? Faction leader, don't try to persuade him. I understand the boss. He wants to personally revenge his enmity and not want to rely on the monastery's power to punish Wu Qi, said Guo Ran. Having been with Long Chen for this long, Guo Ran had a great understanding of Long Chen's character. Long Chen wouldn't easily become angry, but once he did, that meant that something had touched upon his taboos. Furthermore, he was not entirely free from fault in this matter. First of all, Little Snow couldn't formally be considered his house but since he hadn't placed a spiritual imprint on him, there was no way to definitively prove they knew this was Long Chen's magical beast. Wu Qi could easily make an excuse for himself by saying he had accidentally stumbled upon a magical beast in the wilderness and wanted to subdue it. An ownerless magical beast was something anyone had the right to subdue for their own. Even killing them was no problem. If Wu Qi simply said he didn't know this was Long Chen's magical beast, there wasn't much they could do. Little Snow had no markings on him that showed he was Long Chen's, and with no spiritual imprint, he definitely had a leg to stand on. Even the sect leader would not be able to prove the truth, and it was only because Wu Qi had known that that he had been so brazen as to capture Little Snow. With Long Chen's intelligence, how could he not realize Wu Qi was sure of his own safety? So there was no way to get revenge through that route, and so Long Chen was disinclined to explain himself, directly forcing the life and death challenge. Tu Fang's expression changed slightly, as he could easily tell that Long Chen had no chance of defeating Wu Qi, but in accordance to the monastery's rules, not even the sect leader could change what was happening, he could only be worried inside. Long Chen was really too stubborn, not even knowing when to retreat. Tu Fang could only helplessly sigh. You have to think this though, once the challenge is issued, there's no way to change it. Once more warned Ling Yun Zi. Many thanks for the warning sect leader. Disciple is sure. Long Chen cupped his hands to Ling Yun Zi, knowing he was looking out for him, but he had to do this. Seeing Little Snow's condition gave him so much fury he felt he might explode. If he couldn't personally kill Wu Qi, living would be a complete disgrace to him. Although he had no guarantee against a peak mid-tendon transformation expert, he no longer cared. This time it wasn't that will in the back of his head that was forcing him, but his own will. No one would hurt those close to him without paying a price. Wu Qi, do you accept the challenge? Ling Yunzi turned to glance at Wu Qi lightly. Wu Qi immediately felt as if all his thoughts were laid bare before Ling Yunzi. It was as if Ling Yunzi's indifferent gaze could see completely through him, causing him to sweat. Disciple, accepts the challenge. Wu Qi lowered his head, not even daring to look at Ling Yunzi in the eyes. If he didn't accept the challenge, he would be expelled from the monastery. That was the harshest part of the life and death challenge. If you accepted the challenge, you theoretically had a 50% of death. If you didn't accept the challenge, you would immediately have to scram. That was also why most similar situations were to be mediated differently. With this method, the monastery would lose one disciple no matter what. Everyone was silent. Their hearts sunk now that Wu Qi had accepted the challenge. This was an extremely unequal fight, but it was initiated by Long Chen. Those disciples watching couldn't help feeling dissatisfied with this as they were all members of the new generation. Anyone in Long Chen's position would be feeling endless humiliation. If they were Long Chen, they would definitely have just endured it. They wouldn't go and issue a life and death challenge against someone they clearly knew they couldn't defer this was complete folly. But this kind of foolishness was also not something that just anyone had the courage to do. Fine, follow me. Ling Yunzi sighed and waved his hand. Their vision changed and they felt their bodies jolt reappearing at an open space in the rear mountains of the monastery. This completely open space was hundreds of miles wide, but within that wide open space was an enormous iron cage with a huge monolith inside. The monolith was completely square and hundreds of meters high. None of the disciples knew why it was locked within this iron cage. This is the death deciding stage. Sai Tu Fang. Now that the situation had developed to this point, there was no longer any retreat. He took out a spirit stone and placed onto a stell in front of the death deciding stage. The stell had a groove just for that spirit stone. The stell lit up when the spirit stone was placed on it. The land began to shake intensely, giving everyone a fright. 
They were awed to see that the huge monolith inside the cage was rising up. Who knew just how heavy it was for it to be able to shake this land like it was? When it rose over 30 meters, it revealed a martial arena below it. People were startled to see a strange thing on top the martial arena. It seemed like a drawing. It's two people, exclaimed someone. The drawing seemed to be of two people, but they had been crushed into a flat paste. They were horrified to see these corpses. Then when they then looked at the huge monolith that was hundreds of meters thick, they immediately realized how they had died. Suddenly, a breeze blew by, and that drawing blew away. Due to how many years it had been, those corpses had long since turned to ashes. With just a burst of wind, the martial arena returned to its normal state. People's scalps turned numb. No wonder this was called the death deciding stage. The death deciding stage will only be open for two hours. If neither of you is able to kill the other in that time, the rebirth monolith will fall. You can all see how heavy the rebirth monolith is. If it were to fall, not even someone at the elder level would be able to survive. Do your best to kill your opponent before the time is up, or you'll end up like the last two. Solemnly warned Tu Fang. An iron gate opened onto the arena. This small opening of the huge iron cage looked just like the mouth of a savage beast. Long Chen nodded and gestured at Tang Wan Er and them to be at ease before just calmly walking onto the death deciding stage. Little wild, this brother of yours isn't bad. He's got guts. This old man likes that style. The old man looked at Long Chen brightly with a bit of admiration. But are you not worried for him? What do I need to be worried about? My brother Long is super strong. No one can beat him. Wild shook his head. He was practically blindly confident in Long Chen. Of everyone present, Wild was the only one who wasn't worried for Long Chen. In his eyes, Long Chen was an undefeatable god. Even if Long Chen were to fight Ling Yunzi, Wild would still think Long Chen would win. That old man couldn't help shaking his head. With his eyesight, he naturally managed to see through Long Chen's cultivation base. He was at the peak of blood condensation. His blood and ki were surging, and his fighting power was definitely strong. But his physical body was still quite a bit weaker than Wild's. And that saber-tooth bone blade he had wasn't a true weapon. So its power was also not great. And so Long Chen essentially had no chance of defeating Wu Qi. If Long Chen could even manage to keep surviving until the rebirth monolith fell, that would already be amazing to him. If he can survive, then I'll personally go make him a weapon, muttered the old man. Old man, you should go back now, said Wild. Why, my brother Long will definitely win. If you start making the weapon now, you can save some more time. What are you wasting time here for? Wild said simple-mindedly as if Long Chen's victory was already set in stone. That old man actually laughed. He knew Wild's temperament, so he didn't say any more. Turning back to look at the death deciding stage. At this point, Wu Qi also walked in. After Wu Qi entered, the gate immediately shot. A groove in the rebirth monolith lit up, and people saw that it was already starting to slowly descend. This death deciding battle had begun. Chapter 225 Asking to be Killed Translator Born to be when the Iron Gate closed, the rebirth monolith at the top of their heads began to slowly descend. According to Elder Tu Fang, they only had two hours. If they couldn't kill their opponent in two hours, the rebirth monolith would fall, and their fates would be the same as those two drawings from before. Wu Qi unsheathed his longsword, and the aura of the peak mid-tendon transformation realm immediately erupted. This son of a BTCH was actually hiding his strength. Raged wild. When he had fought Wu Qi, Wu Qi had clearly not possessed such power. Foolish kid. That's obvious. This is a life and death battle, not a normal fight. Who would hold anything back? Scolded the old man. Bastard. If I had known he was so sneaky, I would have smashed him with my club. Wild regretfully raged. Ah. Just watch calmly. Wu Qi's completely unrestrained aura astonished everyone. Even from hundreds of meters away, they could still sense an incredible pressure. Wu Qi was much, much stronger than those previous two law enforcers. Tang Wan Er and the others were incredibly worried now. But then seeing how calm Long Chen looked at up the death deciding stage, they calmed back down a bit. The current Long Chen did not appear angry, nor did he appear nervous, nor did he appear afraid. His eyes were merely completely calm, a calmness that was even a bit frightening. There was not even the slightest emotion of his face. It was like he was just a spectator watching this. Now that you're about to die, you suddenly decide to be calm. Wu Qi raised his sword. The space around it was constantly trembling from its might. The person who will die is you. Long Chen icily replied. His bone blade resting on his shoulder. His aura constantly rising. 
His huge divine ring appeared behind him. Even the huge rebirth monolith was unable to block it from crazily absorbing energy from heaven and earth. Long Chen's aura quickly rose, going from a small kitten to a fierce tiger. At the same time, a rumbling came from his body. His aura caused the space around him to become unstable. What sound is that? Everyone could hear an extremely odd sound. It was almost like the roaring of a river. Wild's master, Ling Yunzi, and Tu Fang all looked in shock at Long Chen. They had found the source of that sound. It's the sound of his blood flowing. Tu Fang muttered to himself. That was the roaring of Long Chen's blood. That was something that would happen when people entered the peak of blood condensation. But for most cultivators, if that sound was able to be heard even a meter away, that would already mean they were extremely powerful. If that sound could be heard over a couple meters away, that meant a person's key and blood had reached a shocking point, that their physical body was without compare. Even Gu Yang with his powerful physical body was only able to let that sound transmit out 30 meters. But now Long Chen's blood sounded like the pounding of a war drum. It could be clearly heard even 500 meters away, and it even echoed along the surrounding mountains. It was truly shocking. This fight was not the same as when he had fought Gu Yang. Although Long Chen detested Gu Yang and them, they were all cultivators who were struggling for resources, and so he didn't completely hate them. But Little Snow's miserable state had completely infuriated him. That desire to slaughter, which he had suppressed for so long, finally erupted. Long Chen had always been a bit afraid of this desire for slaughter within him. He could sense that this desire came from the Nine Star Hegemon body art. This desire had erupted out of his control once before. That was when his whole family's lives had been at stake. At that time, Long Chen had killed that white-robed man. But by now he had realized that that white-robed man was actually only slightly stronger than the secular world's tendon transformation cultivators. He wasn't even close to the same level as the tendon transformation experts in the monastery. That was the difference between coming from a weak sect and a powerful sect like the Zhuanshan Monastery. Facing a true peak mid-tendon transformation expert now, Long Chen also didn't hold anything back, completely letting out his desire for slaughter. Only when he no longer suppressed that desire would the nine-star hegemon body art reach its peak state. His blood roared, and countless golden particles flowed within it, his aura becoming increasingly powerful. Not bad, but it's unfortunate you're only a brat in the blood condensation realm. Today, the only one who will die is you. Maybe you should say some final words to your friends now, otherwise you won't have a chance later, sneered Wu Qi. The energy from Long Chen's body immediately doubled. Pointing his bone blade at Wu Qi, Long Chen icily said, Put away your infantile words. If you try to give me, Long Chen, a psychological blow, then that will just reveal your own heart's terror. Do you think I can't see the panic in your eyes? You're afraid. Afraid of being unable to kill me in the time limit and dying with me. You want to break my confidence. Hoping to use words to break my spirit. Don't bother. In my life, I, Long Chen, have been attacked by countless enemies. I've experienced countless life and death battles, and I've walked out from the line between life and death. Do you really think your juvenile methods are able to shake my confidence? Long Chen's voice was full of disdain. His powerful confidence made it so that no one doubted the veracity of his words. Song Mingyuan and them were astonished. If what Long Chen said was true, then he had really experienced absolutely terrifying things. TCH. Rubbish. Since you don't want to be more tactful, then you can just die now. Wu Qi roared and rushed at Long Chen, ruthlessly slashing his sword at Long Chen's face. His attack was extremely fast. As soon as he had moved, his sword had already practically reached Long Chen. His footwork was extremely sly. But what shocked everyone was that Long Chen acted as if he didn't see Wu Qi's sword, stabbing his bone blade at Wu Qi's stomach. The bone blade was over three meters long. The instant Wu Qi's sword would slice through Long Chen's face, his bone blade would also definitely pierce through his stomach. This was a move to bring down an opponent with you, a suicide move. But Long Chen's expression was still completely calm. There was not even the slightest ripple. It was as if he didn't even care about his own life. But while Long Chen might not care about his life, Wu Qi definitely did. He was absolutely horrified. He quickly brought back his long sword to block Long Chen's bone blade. With his powerful tendon transformation cultivation base, Long Chen's full force stab was blocked by him. As expected, you're afraid of death, ridiculed Long Chen icily. Bastard, Wu Qi roared. Although he had blocked Long Chen's bone blade, the power that had been behind it made his heart grow cold, almost injuring his inner organs. 
He knew that all of Long Chen's power had been concentrated on that bone blade. If he had been thrust through by it, the power behind it would have erupted like a volcano and he would definitely have died. Wu Qi roared and strange lines appeared over his sword. A cold ray of sword Qi slashed down on Long Chen. But what was outside of everyone's expectations was that Long Chen also raised his bone blade high into the air. Parting wind slash. Long Chen again seemed to act as if he still didn't see Wu Qi's attack. A terrifying blade image appeared, slashing down on Wu Qi. This was clearly another suicidal attack to bring them both down. Wu Qi was horrified. His sword Qi would definitely kill Long Chen. But Long Chen's blade image would also cut him to pieces. It was already too late to dodge. He went all out to tilt his sword Qi, bringing it clashing against Long Chen's blade image. When the two collided, Wu Qi immediately coughed out a mouthful of blood and retreated a couple steps. That injury wasn't because of just Long Chen's blade image. It was the effect of both their attacks. In order to forcibly change the direction of his sword Qi, he had ended up receiving an internal impact. In ordinary times, that was just a slight shock and nothing to worry about. But Long Chen's full strength blade image had then crashed down on him. His sword Qi had ended up losing over half its power because he had forcibly changed its path causing him to be injured. Seeing Wu Qi cough up blood, everyone's hearts jumped. Wu Qi was clearly incredibly powerful, but in front of Long Chen who was risking his life, he was unable to do anything at all. As for Long Chen, he was completely calm. Even after two exchanges that could have cost him his life, his expression still didn't change. That kind of icy calmness was absolutely terrifying. Wu Qi became infuriated. He had all kinds of powerful attacks. But both times he was forced back by Long Chen. Just as he was preparing to once more attack him, Long Chen's bone blade appeared before his face, just about to cut off his head. He hastily twisted his head and jumped back. He just narrowly managed to avoid Long Chen's attack. But unfortunately, he had forgotten one thing. This was not the outside world, but the death deciding stage. It was only a couple hundred meters wide. After Long Chen's previous two attacks, he had already been forced near the edge. Now that he had jumped back, with a loud bang, everyone was dumbfounded to see Wu Qi's head slam into an iron pillar, but it went without saying that his peak mid-tendon transformation power was extremely great. Despite having shot back like a cannonball and then crashing into the pillar, only a trace of blood flowed down his head. However, he was still extremely dizzy for a moment, stars appearing in his vision, but then realizing what situation he was in, he quickly recovered. He had only just recovered from that bout of dizziness when he saw Long Chen's bone blades cutting a strange arc towards his stomach. It was so fast that he didn't have time to dodge. In his fright, he threw his sword right at Long Chen's heart. His sword wasn't as long as Long Chen's bone blade, so in order to force him back, he had to throw his sword. That way his attack would arrive a bit faster and Long Chen would have to dodge, allowing him to escape his present predicament noveloon.com but what appalled everyone was that Long Chen still ignored the blade. Continuing his attack, two weapons cut through flesh. Long Chen's bone blade stabbed through Wu Qi's stomach, but a sword was sticking out over Long Chen's heart. For a moment, everyone was deathly silent. Chapter 226 Killing Wu Qi Translator Born to be the entire crowd was deathly silent. Tang Wan'er felt the world spinning around her and she directly fainted. It was Ye's Hikyu who caught her. No matter how strong a cultivator was, unless they had stepped into the Xianchen realm. A stab through the heart was absolutely fatal. None of them had expected Long Chen to really die along with Wu Qi. Ling Yunzi and Tu Fang were both dumbstruck. Wasn't it said that divergents could only be killed by the heavenly deos? Was Long Chen not a divergent? The two of them were filled with regret. If they had known earlier that Long Chen wasn't a divergent, they wouldn't have had so many misjivings and would have gone all out to groom him into their strongest disciple. How could it be like this? Wu Qi looked at the bone blade piercing through his stomach. His organs had all been destroyed, and his life was quickly fading away. It's because you're afraid of death, while I am not. Long Chen's expression was still as icily calm as it had been from the start. It was as if he didn't even care about life or death. I, don't want, to die. I, want to live Wu Qi bitterly cried out. Would you have acted differently if you had known this would be the result? Back when you were tormenting Little Snow. Back when you were about to end Little Snow's life. Back when you were acting like some powerful dictator. Did you think this day would come? Get on your way. Long Chen pulled his bone blade out of Wu Qi's stomach. Everyone could clearly see Wu Qi's stomach. A foot long hole had appeared there and his broken organs fell out. Causing him to immediately die. Please sect leader. Please go save Long Chen. 
Suddenly, every single disciple present knelt down towards Ling Yunzi. What was surprising was that even Gu Yang and Lai Qianchang were among them. Ling Yunzi shook his head helplessly. If it had been his own heart that had been stabbed through, then with his Xianchen realm cultivation base, he was able to use the natural energy to heal it. But Long Chen had yet to step into the Xianchen realm, and so he was unable to endure that natural energy. His body would immediately explode from that power. Looking at the kneeling disciples, Ling Yunzi couldn't help sighing. Was this the power of Long Chen's charisma? Even his previous mortal enemies were begging to save him. My brother Long hasn't died, so why does he need to be saved? Wilde looked at everyone with confusion, scratching his head. Suddenly the death deciding stage's gate opened up again. The rebirth monolith also stopped falling. From the start to now, it had only descended half a foot. The fight had ended too quickly. In just four moves, Long Chen had killed Wu Qi. It had just taken a couple breaths of time. But those couple breaths had passed so slowly that all of them had felt as if the entire two hours had passed. It had been that shocking and alarming. Seeing that figure slowly walk out of the death deciding stage, everyone was filled with worship and regret. That sword was still stabbing through his heart. As soon as it was pulled out, he would immediately die. Even if it wasn't pulled out, he wouldn't be able to hold on for more than a couple breaths. Everyone mourned for his passing. Boss, don't die. I'm still counting on you to bring me throughout the world. Guo Ran was the first to rush up and wail. Long Chen frowned and took out a drop of liquid from his spatial ring, swallowing it. Then he grasped the hilt of the sword. Blood flew as he pulled out the sword. No. Everyone let out startled cries. By doing this, all his blood would rush out and he would immediately die. As he pulled out the sword, Long Chen felt that drop of divine life energy healing his heart, quickly fusing the injured portion. It stopped bleeding in just a breath. As he had thought, that spirit world expert had truly been powerful. This thing she had left behind for him was incomparably precious. He would definitely have to be careful with how he used it in the future. But at the same time, he remembered her last words. These drops of divine life energy were a kind of contract. He would need to help her out in the future. Long Chen truly wanted to go to that so-called spirit world. But that kind of thing was far too distant for the current him. Boss, you, you're not dying. Guo Ran was shocked. The opening on his chest had rapidly fused back together, and he couldn't help babbling out nonsense. Long Chen was about to say something when exhaustion battered him and he felt a burst of dizziness. He had lost too much blood for now. Although that drop of divine life energy had healed him, it wasn't able to make up for his blood loss that fast. Boss, Guo Ran immediately ran up to support him. Long Chen shook his head around, still feeling a bout of weakness overcome him. He had lost too much blood. It would probably take him a long time before he could advance to the 11th vestige of blood condensation. Long Chen. Long Chen had only just managed to steady himself slightly when a fragrant breeze blew over and a soft body embraced him. The instant Tang Wan'er had awoken and seen Long Chen still alive, she couldn't help hugging onto him and crying. Long Chen. You scared me to death. You scoundrel. Tang Wan'er had become like a little child again. Her tears streamed down her cheeks. Hey. Hey. I like that you want to hug me, but can we find somewhere without others looking? With so many onlookers, I can't really Long Chen bashfully whispered into Tang Wan'er's ear. You, bastard. Tang Wan'er raged. She wanted to give him a punch, but seeing how pale he was, she decided against it and ran off. Boss, this, Guo Ran didn't really know what to do. Just let her go. It'll be good for her to vent some of her emotions, laughed Long Chen. He then turned and cupped his fist towards everyone. They had all begged the sect leader to save him, whether they were sincere, fake, or just going with the crowd. Long Chen still accepted that emotion. Everyone hastily got up and bowed in response. They then scattered from this place. They all knew that this matter had reached its conclusion and there was nothing else for them to see. If they still didn't leave now, they'd just be shooed off. Everyone quickly left, including the elders and law enforcers. Now it was only Wild and his master, Ling Yunzi, Tu Fang and Long Chen. Excellent. Ling Yunzi looked at Long Chen with praise. His strength had already surpassed his expectations. Long Chen's strength wasn't in his cultivation technique, it wasn't in his physical body, nor was it in his battle skills. His strength lay in his will. In front of an enemy he couldn't possibly defeat, he still didn't feel the slightest despair or panic. That kind of will was something that even those old elders had not achieved. Thank for for the praise sect leader, Long Chen slightly modestly said. 
Long Chen felt a great deal of respect for those who both had powerful cultivation bases yet still remained virtuous and upright. I've already heard of what happened. The monastery's rules truly do have gaps, but I do not possess the authority to change those rules. Sighed Ling Yunzi. Long Chen shook his head. There are no perfect rules in this world. Even heaven and earth are imperfect, let alone man-made rules. So thank you for the support sect leader. This little one was brash and refused your good intentions. And so please forgive me. Ling Yunzi hadn't been optimistic about Long Chen's life and death challenge. And that was why he had given Long Chen so many warnings. Although Long Chen had his own difficulties, he truly had put Ling Yunzi in a tight spot. But despite that, Ling Yunzi had never expressed his displeasure to him. That kind of amicability and temperament had convinced Long Chen that Ling Yunzi was worth his respect. It's good that you can think about it in that way. Your wounds are fine, right? Asked Ling Yunzi. He sensed that drop of divine life energy Long Chen had swallowed was extremely miraculous. It had immediately healed the fatal injury to his heart. That was practically inconceivable. Even the elders of the healing hall were absolute unable to do that. The healing hall's disciples' spiritual key had the greatest effect on outer wounds. But as for inner wounds, they were almost powerless. They could only rely on a slow nourishment method. And that kind of effect was not even as good as using medicinal pills. Thank for you the care sect leader. Disciple is fine. Smiled Long Chen. Although he still felt weak, he was quickly being restored. The only regretful thing was that he had lost a great deal of his essence blood. He would need a long time to replenish that. Which really did give him a headache. Little fellow. You're not bad. Do you want to take me as your master? Wild's master was becoming increasingly pleased with Long Chen. Absolutely not. Ling Yunzi and Tu Fang both shouted out at the same time. Currently, Long Chen was no longer the same as he had been when he had just entered the monastery. As his cultivation base had grown, the heavenly deos had already concealed some of his oddities. Divergence fundamentally could not exist amongst mankind. If he were to take Long Chen as an apprentice, he would be infected by powerful karma. That was not something he would be able to survive. Long Chen had joined the monastery, but the Zhuanshan monastery was just a branch of the Zhuanshan supermonastery, and the supermonastery belonged to the entire Zhuanshan Dao sect. That was also why Ling Yunzi, as a small sect leader of a branch monastery, did not possess the authority to alter any rules. Yet it was also because of that powerful backing that the Zhuanshan monastery was the strongest sect in its region. The Zhuanshan Dao sect possessed millions of years of history. Long Chen wouldn't be able to affect such a huge existence with his karma. And even if he did, it would dilute itself throughout the entire Zhuanshan Dao sect, which would weaken its effect so that it wouldn't be too severe. But if someone dared become Long Chen's master, then that would quickly bring about heavenly punishment, maybe killing him immediately. And so both Ling Yunzi and Tu Fang immediately opened their mouths to shut this down, not leaving any room for discussion. Wild's master became infuriated, raging. Who said it's not alright? If I say it's fine, then it's fine. What? Do you dare oppose me? That old man had a violent temperament, and being refused flat out like this immediately provoked him. Ling Yunzi felt a headache. He knew that once this uncle master of his became angry, he could overturn the entire monastery. Tu Fang hastily gave Long Chen a meaningful glance. Although he didn't understand what was going on, seeing that they refused this so seriously, Long Chen trusted them and apologetically said, I appreciate your kindness, but I'm used to being with my fellow brothers now, so I can't accept senior's good intentions. That old man finally calmed down. It wasn't as if he absolutely had to have Long Chen as an apprentice, but it was simply that Ling Yunzi and Tu Fang's attitude had provoked him. Long Chen wished to stay with his fellow brothers, and that was enough for him to see that Long Chen valued his comrades. That was something obvious just from seeing those disciples willing to kneel down for him. Seeing that old man finally calm down, Ling Yunzi and Tu Fang let out a sigh of relief. Grateful that Long Chen was so sensible, Long Chen suddenly thought of something and his hope immediately rose. To the old man, he asked, Senior, do you have any high rank magical beast essence blood? Chapter 227 Forging a Weapon Translator Born to be Senior, do you have any high rank magical beast essence blood? Hopefully asked Long Chen, and as he had expected, that old man nodded, of course, I have plenty of fourth rank magical beast essence blood, do you need it? He had heard from Wild that this master of his had brought him hunting and that he often ate fourth rank magical beasts, that was why his body was so powerful now, fourth rank magical beast essence blood was extremely precious, 
It had broad uses from tempering the body to being used to refine pills. Long Chen was delighted by this reply and asked, Can senior give me some? Something like that is a small matter. And don't call me senior all the time. It doesn't sound good. My name is Kang Miang. And since you don't want to accept me as master, then just call me Uncle Kang Miang. Kang Miang waved his hand. Long Chen glanced at Ling Yanzi. If he called Kang Miang uncle, then wouldn't that place him in the same generation as the sect leader? Ling Yanzi saw what Long Chen was thinking and lightly smiled. There's nothing to worry about that. Our Zhuangshan monastery isn't the same as other sects. Other sects all have disciples accepting masters and masters accepting disciples. And so they care more for seniority. But our Zhuangshan monastery's style is more similar to the secular world schools. And we're not such sticklers for seniority. So Long Chen turned to Kang Miang and smiled. Long Chen greets Uncle Kang Miang. He, little fellow, I really do like you. That kind of arrogance and ruthlessness within you is just like how I was back in the day. Only people like you are able to truly stand out when fighting against those sinister corrupt path disciples. As for those greenhouse cabbages, God amen, it's not even worth evaluating them. Little Ling Zi, you don't need to object. I've long since said the monastery's rules are faulted. With such a framework, what kind of crap did you think you could raise? TCH, in a true battle, is the winner who is stronger? Is the winner who has more battle skills? Is the winner who has the most beautiful technique? Wrong. The goal of fighting is to use the least effort to kill your opponents. If you can kill someone in one blow, absolutely do not waste a second blow. If you encounter an opponent stronger than you, then you have to do it with exactly the same attitude as Long Chen did. You might kill me, but I'll also bring you down with me. But what about that idiot? That Wu something. Kang Mian couldn't even think of his name. Tu Fang supplemented. Wu Qi, right, Wu Qi, he's just a lump of dog sheet. With that kind of empty arrogance and conceit, he'll piss himself the instant he encounters those savage corrupt path experts. In a life and death final battle, he still wanted to use little schemes and play some nonsense psychological war. These are the experts you've raised? All you did raise was a punch of pigs for the slaughter to send to the corrupt path's disciples. Continuing like that. Every subsequent generation of disciples in our monastery will continue to decline. Kang Miang became more and more angry as he spoke. In the end sighing, melancholy appeared in his eyes, seeming as if he had remembered a certain something. Ling Yanzi didn't say anything in reply to this scolding. He also knew the monastery's rules had problems, but those rules were set from above, and he was unable to change them. Little Ling Zi, at the beginning your talent was actually extremely great. But you lack a certain ruthlessness now. You act too overcautious about everything. You have no boldness. And in the end, you became our monastery sect leader. But what about those fellow geniuses in your generation? What cultivation base have they reached? As a person, being overcautious and steady has its advantages. But as a cultivator, acting like that just leads to demise. If you have no courage or daring, it's impossible for you to reach further heights. Talent is just a fart. Maybe if you release it you might shock people with the noise and smoke people out. But if you can't release it, who knows what crap you're holding in. Long Chen almost laughed at that final line. But Kang Miang's words were really too right. His coarse words hit the nail right on the head. Countless talents were born every day. But without that will to cultivate as if their life depended on it. Without that bravery to climb to the peak. Without that determination to break free from the shackles of heaven and earth. All that talent was just wasted. From the start, Long Chen had been a bit disdainful of the monastery's disciple grooming method. Other than that first cave trial, he didn't approve of any of it. Little Ling Zi, a person's lifetime in this world passes by quickly, just like the passing of seasons for plants. Let me ask you, when you're facing death, do you know what you'll have left behind in your life? You will have left behind nothing, because in your lifetime, all you did was follow all the rules and play a role given to you by someone else. Kang Miang shook his head with pity. Originally I was hoping to raise you into a true martial artist, but in the end you listened to my senior apprentice brother, acting like a well-behaved child. But when Kang Miang looked at Wild, he said with satisfaction, but at least the heavens treated me right and let me encounter such a wonder apprentice in my final years. He, the heavens also treated me good to let me meet you old man. Now I can eat till I'm really full, Wild said gratefully. Kang Miang immediately laughed heartily. Although Wilde was a bit naive and a bit foolish, he never beat around the bush. Although sometimes he made him infuriated, he really did like this foolish kid. He treated Wilde as his own child.
He knew Wilde was extremely simple and honest. He would never go bully others. So as soon as he saw Wilde being bullied, he hadn't cared about anything else, and had directly given Elder Sun a slap in the face. If he wasn't worried about Ling Yunzi being right there, he probably would have already beaten Elder Sun dead. His gloominess at not being able to do that was immediately blown away by just a single sentence from Wilde. Ling Yunzi sunk into thought for a moment and then turned to Long Chen. Long Chen, how do you think the monastery should act in order to let the disciples grow stronger? Long Chen bitterly smiled. Great sect leader, you've really overestimated me. I'm just an amateur in the blood condensation realm. How could my thoughts be worth your time? That's all right. Just tell me what you think. I want to hear it. Solemnly said Ling Yunzi. Since he wasn't joking, Long Chen also became serious. Since sect leader has ordered me, I can only tell you my own random thoughts. In my eyes, the monastery's rules can be summed up like this. You want a horse to run, but you don't give your horse any grass to eat. You want to raise your disciples, but you don't give them enough space to grow. Instead, you make them play in a childlike competition. It is truly senseless. Tu Fang frowned. Without competition, there won't be any pressure. And without pressure, how can they quickly cultivate? Obviously Tu Fang was dissatisfied. If there was no competition and the resources were just split up evenly, then the disciples really would grow much slower. Competition is of course a good thing, but there is a precondition. It must be a healthy competition model. It's very obvious that the monastery's competition is a diseased method of competition. The original intent was actually quite good, to let everyone compete with each other in order to raise everyone up, using a mutual pressure to make them work harder, letting everyone have a desire to surpass their fellow and go all out to cultivate. It's just like Uncle Kang Ming said, this kind of method in itself isn't bad, but the so-called experts raised from this method are just a bunch of trash. They think that because their cultivation base is high, because their talent is good, because their battle skills are strong, that they can be unrivaled under the heavens. Such people will immediately find that those things they rely on are absolutely laughable in the face of a true life and death battle. Your opponents don't care what your cultivation base is, they don't care what battle skills you have, they don't care what talent you possess. All they'll care about is purely how to cut off your head. At such a time, the monastery's disciples' empty attacks and fighting style will be as weak as tofu in front of an enemy fighting with their life on the line. In the end, they will simply die by other people's hands. Tu Fang and Ling Yunzi silent pondered over this. Long Chen had brought up the monastery's current awkward state, but they were also helpless to change this. It wasn't as if they could have their disciples actually try to kill each other. Not only would that not be approved by the higher-ups, but then who would send their disciples here? Just that final trial was enough to cause countless powers to shrink back. If they then continued letting their disciples die, then they wouldn't have any more disciples in the end. Then how can we change the current situation? Asked Ling Yunzi. Set up a common enemy. Long Chen said extremely straightforwardly. Oh, aren't we mortal enemies with the corrupt path? Then we don't even have to set it up ourselves. Our disciples have always been just whetstones for their disciples. Then why can't we make them our whetstones? With a common enemy as a goal, everyone will grow for a common goal. Everyone will end up on the same page. It's much better than this internal strife method. And the result of such internal struggle is that no one will trust each other. Thinking allies are enemies. Even if a new mutual enemy appears, it would be difficult to make everyone truly work together. Said Long Chen. Tu Fang nodded. This is one method. But we don't know when the corrupt path's disciples will invade us. That's a bit troublesome. Then why can't we just invade them? Long Chen asked strangely. Tu Fang and Ling Yunzi were both shook. It had always been the corrupt path invading them and them passively defending. They were already used to just relying on defense. Long Chen's proposal had definitely moved them, but something as major as that had to be properly considered first. Thank you. I'll think it over. Ling Yunzi smiled to Long Chen. Space twisted around him and Tu Fang, and they both disappeared. Long Chen. Here's the magical beast essence blood I've gathered. You can take it all. Kang Ming directly gave Long Chen a spatial ring. Looking into the spatial ring, Long Chen almost let out a shout. There were at least 50 large jars of magical beast essence blood inside. And those were all 4th rank magical beast essence blood. If he used it to manufacture 10,000 beast essence blood, that would definitely let his cultivation base explosively rise. Other than this, I don't have anything good to give you. But as a gift for our first meeting, I'll forge you a new weapon, said Kang Ming. Old man, 
Didn't you say that it was a bat? How is it a gift now? Asked Wild curiously. Kang Ming immediately reddened and viciously glared at him. Ugh, how did he end up becoming smart the moment he wasn't supposed to be smart? But Long Chen was delighted to hear Kang Ming would make a weapon for him. He was lacking a good heavy weapon at this time. Thank you Uncle Kang Ming. Can the weapon be a bit heavier than normal? Excitedly asked Long Chen. Then attack me with a full strength punch, said Kang Ming. Long Chen didn't stand on courtesy, knowing he wanted to estimate his physical power and punched out with his full strength. Blocking Long Chen's fist with a hand, Kang Ming was shocked. You're even stronger than I thought. This punch contained over 800,000 pounds of force. Then do you want me to make a 50,000 pound saber? Can it be 150,000 pounds? And even heavier is alright for me too. Long Chen couldn't wait. Chapter 228 Corrupt Devil Trial by Fire Translator Born to be 150,000 pounds? That's a bit too heavy, don't you think? Said Kang Ming with some surprise. Even with Wild's insane physical strength, his huge club only weighed 200,000 pounds. Uncle Kang Ming, it definitely won't be a problem. When I summon out my divine ring, my physical strength explosively grows, and I'm also about to advance. So the heavier the better, explained Long Chen. Long Chen was still only at the peak of blood condensation. Once he advanced, his ki and physical power would complement each other, allowing his strength to rise to a new level. Kang Ming couldn't help smiling bitterly. Looks like I'll be busy for a while. Wild has also been complaining his weapons too light lately. You two really are brothers. That kind of physical strength is absolutely shocking. But don't worry, I'll make both of you ultra-heavy weapons. Thank you Uncle Kang Ming. Long Chen was ecstatic. Back when he had first seen Wild's huge club, he had been filled with envy Noveloon.com he would only be able to truly bring out his full strength by using an extremely heavy saber. Then, even if he encountered someone on the same level as Wu Qi, he would be able to defeat Chiring his opponent without risking his life. Most importantly, Long Chen was about to use all this 4th rank magical beast essence blood to make 10,000 beast essence blood, which would allow him to quickly break through. The difficulty in advancing with the 9-star hegemon body art after the 10th heaven stage was extremely great, but at the same time, once he did advance, it would allow his physical body to strengthen to a new level. Even if he only broke through to the 13th heaven stage without reaching the tendon transformation realm, he would be able to look down on anybody below the mid-tendon transformation realm. After saying farewell to Senior Kang Ming, Long Chen and Wild returned to the Heaven Earth faction. When they arrived, they were immediately met with a burst of cheers. Long Chen's name had already resounded throughout the entire monastery. It might be possible for a couple people in the monastery to not know who the sect leader was, but there was not a single person who didn't know who Long Chen was. Ever since Long Chen had arrived at the trial to join the monastery, he had created miracle after miracle. Now he had even killed Wu Qi with just four moves, becoming an undefeatable god in people's eyes. Little Snow was also present but his body was still incomparably weak and he could barely walk. That drop of divine life essence's greatest use was for healing injuries. Little Snow's outer wounds had already been completely healed by now. His body was covered in scabs, and once they fell off, new fur would grow out. Seeing Long Chen arrive, Little Snow excitedly stood up and waddled over. Long Chen immediately rushed over to him and hugged his huge head, giving him a couple pecks on the forehead. I got rid of the fellow who bullied you. Woo, woo. Little Snow actually said he wished he could personally go get his revenge. Sorry, I couldn't let you personally get your revenge, smiled Long Chen. Unfortunately, Long Chen's temper wasn't good enough to wait for Little Snow to recover and let him kill Wu Qi personally. Gently rubbing Little Snow's head, he said a couple words to everyone before going to his immortal cave. You're back? Wan Er's really mad at you. You should go coax her. Seeing Long Chen return. King Yu stealthily pointed to the inside of the immortal cave. Long Chen knew that Tang Wan'er had really become furious today. She really had been put on the spot in front of so many people when she had thought he was about to die. And after all, she wasn't as thick-skinned as he was. At the same time, Long Chen scolded himself for being stupid and making inappropriate jokes without looking at the situation. Wild stayed outside to take care of Little Snow, while King Yu also immediately left. Long Chen went directly inside the immortal cave, seeing Tang Wan'er in the innermost room. Entering that room, he saw Tang Wan'er's expression was icy cold, and she didn't say a word. She merely viciously glared at him when he came in. Sister King Yu said you were crying and wanted me to coax you. 
but it looks like you aren't crying anymore. So I guess I'll leave Aya. Long Chen had just taken a step back when Tang Wan Er suddenly grabbed his collar. After fighting, Long Chen was already in a weak state. Other than his skillful tongue, he had no firepower left within him. He was directly pulled over to Tang Wan Er. Tang Wan Er had already forgotten Long Chen's state, and her light grab immediately caused Long Chen to crash into her, making her let out a sharp cry. This wasn't Long Chen trying to take advantage. At least, in theory it wasn't. But feeling that soft embrace and smelling her fragrance, Long Chen felt a burst of warmth. Exhaustion battered him, and just like that, he fell unconscious within Tang Wan Er's gentle embrace. As he slept, he dreamed that someone was pushing him and then someone lifted him up. But Long Chen didn't bother too much with that. Even if someone had thrown him into a dung heap, he would have still stayed asleep. That battle had been too tense. When Long Chen once more awakened, he saw Little Snow lying next to his bed. Seeing him awake, Little Snow affectionately rubbed his head over him. Looks like you're much better seeing how much livelier Little Snow was now. It seemed his body was already starting to recover. Ao Wu. Oh. Wild gave you some meat. Haha. <laughs> you two really are suited to each other. Laughed Long Chen. Jumping out of bed and tidying up his clothes. He heard a bit of a ruckus outside and hastily walked out. Wild. You're killing me. How many times have I told you not to mix up the salt and sugar? This meat's way too salty now. As soon as he exited his room, he heard Tang Wan Er scolding. At some point, they had set up a huge grill in an empty spot of the immortal cave. A 15-meter sawtooth porcupine was currently roasting over it. Tang Wan Er was currently gesturing and scolding Wild. Wild bitterly said, Sister Wan Er, when I eat meat alone, I never use any of this. Long Chen laughed. Ah, how lively. Long Chen, quickly come eat some. Here. Taste what I cooked just now. Tang Wan Er handed him a skewer of meat. It seemed that anger from that day had long since faded. Long Chen took a bite of the fragrant skewer. It seemed she had added some sort of seasoning. It was a bit odd, but it was because it was so odd that it also tasted so good. Excellent. It's really delicious. As expected, your cooking skills are top notch. Long Chen definitely knew not to criticize her food. If he really did say it didn't taste good. Perhaps that bamboo skewer stick in her hand would end up directly inserted into his butt. Wild said, Brother Long, eat some more. Little Snow also needs to eat to heal. Long Chen laughed, I don't need to. In the rubble wasteland, I ate two months of just meat. I'm already kind of nauseated just thinking about it. I'd prefer Sister King use vegetable dishes. Other than meat, there were a couple of King Yu's personally cooked dishes here. Tang Wan Er and King Yu came to sit with Long Chen, eating while chatting. There were also some cooked wonder carps on the table. Tang Wan Er had excavated a small pond in the immortal cave, and Long Chen had placed them inside to breed a while ago. When she had nothing else to do, Tang Wan Er would occasionally fish up a couple to eat a good meal. By now there were less than a hundred of them left. Wild and Little Snow didn't eat with them. Seeing that Long Chen had enough meat for himself here, Wild took that huge sawtooth porcupine to the side and ate it with Little Snow. That was because Tang Wan Er had too many rules when he ate with her, and he preferred to let himself eat freely. In any case, he was fine as long as he had enough meat. He never really cared about the taste. In fact, it could already be said that Wild had advanced a great deal in terms of manners. Back in Phoenix Cry, he would directly eat all his meat raw. Right. What happened to Qixin Long Chen suddenly thought of that day. He remembered he had just thrown that fellow to the ground and forgotten about him. In truth. These matters were all incited by that bastard Qixin. Long Chen had only not killed him because he didn't want to give him such a quick death. He died. Answered Tang Wan Er with an odd expression. How'd he die? Who killed him? Long Chen was startled. No idea. During the chaotic battle that day, everyone in the Heaven Earth Alliance participated. And after all the chaos, someone noticed that he had already died. According to the observers, he was trampled to death during the chaos. Explained Tang Wan Er. Long Chen was surprised. It was too bad Qi Xin's luck was so good. If he hadn't died, Long Chen still had 10,000 ways to make him live a life worse than death. HMPH. If I had the ability to raise the dead, i definitely let him die a couple more times. Snorted Long Chen. Ah. Just let it go. He's already dead. So everything is over. Furthermore, the monastery didn't investigate Qi Xin's death at all. So we're also extremely lucky. Consoled Tang Wan Er. The death of a core disciple was a major affair. It was definitely fortunate for them that the monastery hadn't investigated it. 
According to the monastery's rules, no matter what the result of their investigation was, there should have at least been a public announcement, but they had let this matter go just like this. Was it because Ling Yanzi was busy? Suddenly Long Chen thought of what he had said to Ling Yanzi. Could it be that he had really taken it seriously and was planning on taking action immediately? Faction leader, there's big news. Suddenly, a disciple of the Heaven Earth faction ran in with a handout. He respectfully gave it to Tang Wan Er. Reading it, she jumped in shock. No way? Three months later, we're undergoing a trial by fire with the corrupt devils. Long Chen hastily read through it as well. It said that all disciples were to prepare themselves. Three months later, all disciples would be sent into the territory controlled by the corrupt path. There were countless corrupt path disciples there. The monastery's disciples were to do their best to slaughter as many of them as possible. Once they finished their missions, they would receive extremely plentiful rewards and points. During these next three months leading up to that trial, each disciple would receive ten times the amount of resources whether it was just the monthly ration or for completing missions. Long Chen smiled. Ling Yanzi really was planning on going all out now. During these three months, the monastery would raise their disciples' power as quickly as possible. Ten times the resources. With that many points, they could do many things. But it was still that expression. After giving you some candy, a cold slap would not be too far. And now the candy was so amazing. That meant that the following slap would definitely be more vicious than ever. This trial by fire would be extremely terrifying. Lives would be lost with the slightest mistake. This time, Ling Yanzi was really betting it all. One or, gather everyone from the Heaven Earth Alliance. A great battle is approaching. Long Chen looked into the distance. For some reason, he felt his own blood become hotter. It was as if slaughter was his most primal desire. Normally, he would suppress that kind of desire. But when it came to the vicious corrupt paths experts, he could finally release all his inhibitions. In fact, perhaps it was only through slaughter that he could make himself stronger and let the nine-star hegemon body art reach perfection. Chapter 229 Helping Increase Strength Translator Born to be following the announcement of that news, the entire monastery's atmosphere became extremely heavy. All the disciples felt pressure from the imminent future. At this time, Long Chen had gathered all five of the Heaven Earth Alliance's core disciples together. For the core disciples, just thinking about such a fight would make their blood boil. But not all people had such confidence. Although most people were eagerly getting ready, there were some who were filled with fear. That shadow left in their hearts from the final part of the disciple trial had yet to fade even now. The miserable scene of those who had failed still replayed over and over in their minds. Long Chen, what should we be doing now? Asked Song Mingyuan. Although Long Chen wasn't a core disciple, they would follow him, supporting whatever Long Chen decided. Currently the monastery is providing so many benefits to increase everyone's strength. The monastery plans to send all us disciples to the border of the corrupt path's territory three months from now. Then we are to hunt the corrupt path disciples, exchanging their heads for large amounts of points. This trial is a true life and death trial. It is no longer a game. There are no rules. The one thing you must do is keep yourself alive. That's because the corrupt path's experts are vicious and sinister, with an unending number of tricks. To them, killing others is nothing out of the ordinary. Compared to them, the disciples from the monastery are just greenhouse flowers and will definitely end up suffering a disadvantage. Long Chen was slightly worried. Back when he had tricked Gui Sha into teaching him some of his techniques, he had learned that the majority of the corrupt path's battle skills were cruel and insidious to a terrifying point. Almost all their battle skills required them to kill others in order to gain a higher level of mastery. They would need to take other people's lives in order to establish their own foundation. That was truly chilling. In comparison, the monastery's disciples were more proficient in making tiny little schemes and scuffles. Once they encountered the corrupt path's disciples and their insidious means, Long Chen estimated that quite a few people would end up wetting their pants in fear. That wasn't the disciples' fault. They were like that simply because their family's grooming had raised them like that. These were the so-called geniuses from their family. But putting it bluntly, they might be able to get full marks on theory and little competitions. But in a life and death fight, they would be doomed. So it could be said that talent was both useful and useless. That was also why Kang Ming scolded Ling Yanzi, saying that the monastery's disciples were just whetstones to hone the corrupt path's disciples. Although it wasn't pleasant to hear, it was simply the truth. Otherwise, the righteous path would not have been suppressed by the corrupt path for so many years. 
the instigator of all the righteous and corrupt battles were all wisdom, while they only passively defended. This time it seemed Kang Ming had struck a chord in Ling Yanzi's heart, and he was preparing to completely change this conservative strategy. That's just a fact. Quite a few people's expressions sunk when they heard this news. They still haven't recovered from the impact of the disciple trial, nodded Ye's Hikyu. Back when people had first heard this news, there had been quite a few people who had mocked those people for being cowards. Ye's Hikyu had harshly berated them. Although she knew those people were joking, this kind of joke wasn't appropriate. A person's confidence level was often the deciding factor of whether or not they would survive a battle. Long Chen's fight with Wu Qi was an extremely obvious example. Despite Wu Qi being much stronger, in front of Long Chen's imposingness and life risking attacks, his powerful cultivation base had been useless and he had been unable to bring out any of his true strength. He hadn't even had the chance to release one of his more powerful moves before he was killed by Long Chen. Just how depressed must he have been when he had died? But that was also normal. According to the normal standards, as someone at the peak of the mid tendon transformation realm, not even 10 ordinary mid tendon transformation experts would have necessarily been able to kill him. Wu Qi's strength had truly been much, much greater than Long Chen's, but he had been the one to be defeated, and he was also defeated in such a quick manner that was extremely thought provoking. It was precisely because of being stimulated by Long Chen's display and Kang Ming's reminder that Ling Yanzi had finally come to this decision to invade the corrupt path. This was something that was in contrary to the monastery's regulations. If the higher-ups were to learn of it, he probably would lose his sect leader position. But it was precisely like Kang Ming had said. If Ling Yanzi continued following the rules for his lifetime, his life would have no meaning in the end. Now he hoped to bet on Long Chen. Long Chen was somewhat aware of what Ling Yanzi was thinking. That gave him an extremely great pressure. This plan had been suggested by him. If it failed, he would have caused many people to die. The reason I gathered you all today is because I hope for you to placate your people. Don't let them be too nervous. It'd be best for them to just focus on cultivating as hard as possible. As for confidence, that isn't their job, but yours. Long Chen looked at them. Us. They didn't understand what he meant. Yes, you. As core disciples, you are the spirit of this monastery. Your display at that time will concern everyone's life and death. You must all become much stronger during this short time and become more self-confident. When the trial begins, you'll all have to show off and display a beautiful victory over your opponents. Use your own actions to tell everyone that the corrupt path's experts aren't terrifying. As long as you cut off their heads, they will also die. Laughed Long Chen. Everyone nodded. Long Chen's words made sense. But they all felt the pressure on themselves increase. Li Qi bitterly smiled. Putting it like that. I really feel worried. If I end up making a mistake, wouldn't I have ended up taking down 99 of my brother's lives with me? The others also forced a bitter smile. Only Tang Wan'er didn't feel any pressure. That was because her Heaven Earth faction had Long Chen. With him present, nothing could reduce the Heaven Earth faction's morale. You're only worried because you aren't confident enough. You haven't gone through any true life and death experiences. So how could you have obtained an unrevealed confidence? That's why, right now, I'll give you some life and death tempering. Solemnly said Long Chen. Life and death tempering? You're joking. Everyone was shocked. Looks like you guys still don't understand me. When you think I'm serious, I'm actually just joking. But when I'm serious, you think I'm joking. Right now I'm completely serious. In a bit, Song Mingguan, Li Qi and Luo Kang, you three will attack me together. Remember that this won't be some martial competition, but a slaughter fest. I will push you to the edge of death to awaken your ancestral marks, said Long Chen. Will that be of any use? It's not like you'll really kill us, said Luo Kang with some confusion. His family had long since tried that on him countless times, trying to get him to activate his ancestral mark from the brink of death, but they had failed time and time again. Furthermore, they hadn't even known that it had been fake back then. They had thought those assassins their family had set up were all real. But now Long Chen just directly told them this. This wouldn't have any meaning. Without fear, how could they activate their ancestral marks? You're wrong. If you can't block my attacks, I will really kill you. Long Chen icily looked at the three of them. I would rather you die by my hands than by the hands of those corrupt path disciples. At the very least, if you die by my hands you'll be able to keep your corpses intact. The three of their hearts jumped. Long Chen was serious? Looking at his eyes, there was not even the slightest emotion in them. 
He looked just like he had when he had fought with Wu Qi, filled with a desire for slaughter. Sweat dripped down their neck and their hair stood on end. This current Long Chen was practically a demon king. They could tell Long Chen was being serious. If they couldn't stop him, they would die. Let's go. Long Chen got up. The five of them didn't say a word as they followed behind him. They left the monastery and arrived at a valley. Long Chen faced off against Song Mingyuan, Li Qi, and Luo Kang. Think about this for a moment. The people beside you could be your family, your parents, your lover. They could be the most precious existence to you. But treat me as a cruel killer of the corrupt path. If someone goes to mercilessly cut down those closest to you, how will you feel? Okay, let's begin. Long Chen directly sent his bone blade stabbing towards the still stupefied Song Mingyuan. He was like a bolt of lightning, going directly for Song Mingyuan's throat. At the very start, he already aimed for the vitals. Song Mingyuan was horrified. By the time he realized what was going on, Long Chen's bone blade had already reached his throat, and it was already too late to dodge. Long Chen's bone blade possessed a mountain splitting, ocean overturning strength. Song Mingyuan could practically already see the scene of his throat being pierced. Boom. The instant that bone blade was the about to pierce through Song Mingyuan's throat, Luo Kang's staff struck out, smashing aside Long Chen's bone blade. Although the bone blade was missed, that earth-shattering power still exploded out, sending the two of them flying. Tang Wanner and Ye's Hikyu almost both cried out. Long Chen didn't have any misjivings. If it weren't for Luo Kang, Song Mingyuan would already have become a dead man. Long Chen's really planning on killing them. For the first attack, I purposely kept it a bit slower. Next time I won't. Maybe if I change faces you'll realize this is no game. Long Chen put on a sinister mask. It looked like a malicious devil. And with that on his face, he once more charged forward with his bone blade. This time at Li Qi. Li Qi roared and slashed his saber onto Long Chen's bone blade. But Long Chen's strength was too terrifying. And he directly vomited blood and was sent flying. But as he shot through the air, Long Chen followed with him. His bone blade slashed down on his throat. Li Qi, Luo Kang and Song Mingyuan roared. Li Qi was powerless to resist this next attack. If that bone blade reached him, he would definitely die. The two of them ignored their own injuries. It was already too late for them to reach Li Qi at that point. The two of them stabbed their weapons straight towards Long Chen. Long Chen coldly snorted and waved his bone blade, knocking away their two weapons. The two of them received a heavy impact and once more vomited blood. Long Chen's bone blade was like the Grim Reaper's sickle, slashing down on the two of their necks. His speed was so fast that neither of them could dodge. Go to hell. Li Qi roared and charged at Long Chen. He was actually weaponless still, and grabbing onto Long Chen's arm, he bit down hard. Long Chen didn't continue attacking. Taking off his mask, he looked at the crazy Li Qi who was still biting on his arm and smiled. Congratulations on awakening your ancestral marks. Chapter 230 Yuan Spirit Pill Translator Born to be congratulations on awakening your ancestral marks. Long Chen's words were very light, but they all heard them. Tang Wanner and Ye's Hikia were looking at them in complete disbelief. Awakened. Ancestral marks. They couldn't believe their eyes. At some point, a faint rune had appeared over Song Mingyuan, Li Qi, and Luo Kang's foreheads. Although they were a bit indistinct. That faint pressure coming from them proved they were definitely ancestral marks. Only then did Song Mingyuan and Luo Kang react. Glancing at each other, they saw the other person's ancestral mark and went wild with joy. Hey, Li Qi, when are you going to stop biting my arm? Did you get addicted to it? Li Qi didn't even hear Long Chen's words. Holding Long Chen's arm, his eyes were completely red and he had already turned into a madman. Crazily biting down. TCH. Long Chen swung his arm and sent Li Qi flying. But even as he was flung off, Li Qi bit down and tore off Long Chen's sleeve. Everyone was surprised and found that funny. Li Qi was still berserk, immediately charging back, his eyes completely red, roaring, You want to kill my brothers? I'll bite you to death. Song Mingyuan and Luo Kang immediately went over and grabbed him, shouting, Hey, hey, wake up, it's already over, being tightly restrained by the two of them. Li Qi gradually awoke, looking at them in confusion. What are you guys holding me back for? We're on the same side. Long Chen shrugged his shoulders. On his bare arm were some bruises that Li Qi had caused. I didn't think you were still hiding such a unique skill. Not bad. Looking at the bruised part of Long Chen's arm, they couldn't help laughing. They were also moved by each other's actions. As in the face of death, all of them had stood by each other. Long Chen, did we really awaken our ancestral marks? 
they could sense a new kind of energy flowing within their blood now, that was due to the ancestral mark, but they couldn't believe this, their families had spent a great deal of effort without being able to do this and had already given up, but now, in just the blink of an eye, they had awakened their ancestral marks, Long Chen looked at the three of their disbelieving expressions and shook his head, I'm also not too sure, do you want to test it some more, Long Chen raised up his bone blade, immediately frightening the three of them into babbling, no, no, stop, we'll just believe this, they would rather face those crazy corrupt path experts than face Long Chen again, they felt Long Chen was even crazier than them, most frightening of all was that despite how crazy he acted, his expression never changed, seeing the three of them be frightened green, Tang Wan Er laughed, even the always expressionless Ye Hiki who couldn't help smiling Noveloon.com it really was amazing that Long Chen could immediately switch from being a cold-blooded, merciless killer to a joking rascal, haha, <laughs> us three brothers have also revived our ancestral marks, he, if my dad knew, he'd definitely be happy, the three of them laughed heartily, finally accepting this fact, this joy had come far too suddenly, even the three of them were unable to remain calm, who knew how many generations of geniuses in their family had still yet to have anyone revive their ancestral mark, Long Chen, when can you revive your ancestral mark, if you awakened your ancestral mark, just how powerful would you become, the three of them excitedly turned to Long Chen, Long Chen's cultivation base was still only at the peak of blood condensation, if he awakened his ancestral mark, wouldn't he be unrivaled in the future, Long Chen smiled slightly, but his smile was somewhat pained, his spirit blood had been stolen, so there was not even a drop of ancestral blood within him, how could he possibly awaken his ancestral mark, his spirit blood, spirit root, and spirit bone had all been taken, he didn't even know who his own father and mother were, he didn't even know if they were alive, the only clue was the jade pendant, but Long Chen knew he was far from being strong enough to learn his own background, he had to keep accumulating strength, Everyone saw the change in Long Chen's expression and immediately shut their mouths. But Long Chen quickly laughed. My ancestral mark isn't the same as yours. It'll depend on chance. Long Chen didn't want to continue talking about that topic. Long Chen, did you long since know how to awaken a person's ancestral mark? Song Mingyuan was a bit curious. Long Chen had said at the start that he would let them all awaken their ancestral marks. And his voice had been completely calm, full of confidence. Long Chen shook his head, I did think of a way, but I wasn't too sure it would work for any of you, I never thought all three of you would end up awakening it, Long Chen, how did you do this, we still don't get it, Li Qi was still puzzled, they had activated their ancestrals marks far too suddenly, it was so fast they hadn't even realized it, their ancestral marks had just appeared, that was too curious, first of all, I'd like to apologize for misjudging you, at the beginning I said to treat the ones beside you as your own family because I was afraid you didn't care about them enough. But then I realized I was wrong. You've long since begun treating each other as your fellow brothers. You care more about your brothers' lives than your own. You would rather die than let them die in front of you. That is also why you were able to revive your ancestral mark so quickly. The method your families tried to stimulate you was wrong. They thought that when a person felt their life was threatened that would cause them to explode with their full strength, activating their bloodline's energy, but in reality, they didn't know there was another kind of power that could let someone erupt with even greater power, far surpassing that full strength from when only their own lives were threatened, that thing is what I said when I fought with Gui Sha, a will to protect, that is a kind of sacred power, in order to protect the ones in your heart, you're able to give up even your own life, that is your absolute strongest state, because the ones in your heart are even more important than your own life. You need an even greater power to protect them. When you have that kind of thirst for power, your body will automatically bring out all your potential. At that point your bloodline strength will begin to revive and your ancestral mark will be awakened. Hearing this, everyone's hearts beat wildly. Back when he had mentioned a will to protect to Gui Sha, they hadn't really understood what he had meant. But now that he explained it again, they realized his theory was absolutely correct. The freshly awakened ancestral marks were an absolute proof. Long Chen, if you sell this secret to those families, you'll definitely make a huge profit, said Li Qi. Long Chen shook his head and laughed. It's not so simple. Did you think that just by learning this technique, you could easily awaken a person's ancestral mark? What? Why not? People are all selfish, especially those pampered disciples. They are pampered to death as soon as they are born. 
the absolute majority of people love themselves the most. How could they give up their life for someone else? If someone didn't truly care about those close to them, how would you trigger that thirst for greater strength? So although the principle is simple, it's extremely difficult to put into action. And so all us brothers will become true brothers from now on. Long Chen extended his hand. Song Mingyuan, Li Qi, and Luo Kang also extended a hand, putting them on top of each other. Brothers together are undefeatable. The four of them shouted together. Then they looked at each other. Deep affection emanating from their eyes. Ugh. Can you four old men stop being so disgusting? Never make that kind of expression again, said Tang Wan Er to the side. The four of them immediately laughed. Three of them had revived their ancestral marks today. That was an incredibly joyous occasion, and they all returned to the monastery to celebrate. When news that the three of them had revived their ancestral marks, the entirely monastery was shaken. Even Tu Fang personally came to take a look. Long Chen didn't hide any of it, explaining the whole story to him. Looking at Long Chen, Tu Fang didn't even know what to say. Then looking at Song Mingyuan and them, he was filled with praise. To be willing to sacrifice themselves for their companions required more than just bravery. Even Tu Fang was moved by the camaraderie between them. But he also knew that even if people knew this method, it wouldn't be that useful. Not every person was so big-hearted and brave. To most people, Song Mingyuan, Li Qi, and Luo Kang's actions were completely foolish. It was just like how they had still decided to ally with the Heaven Earth faction despite Long Chen being exiled. Back then, the chance of him returning alive had been slim to none. But even after being suppressed by their powerful opponents, they hadn't abandoned the Heaven Earth Alliance. Those kinds of fools really were few and far between. But Long Chen's method would only work for such fools. Those smart people would never be able to use this method. Once the three of them awakened their ancestral marks, they stayed with the Heaven Earth faction. That way they could stay with Tang Wanner and Ye's Hikyu and borrow their assistance to quickly learn how to properly control their ancestral mark's power. As for Long Chen, he didn't stand on courtesy and took all five factions points to go the Zhuanshan Pavilion and buy a huge amount of medicinal ingredients. During the next period of time, Long Chen essentially never parted from his furnace. Each day he would constantly refine medicinal pills. He only left his immortal cave after half a month. He had refined over 500 yuan spirit pills. They were third-tier medicinal pills, but they were top-notch even among the third-tier medicinal pills and extremely precious. They could allow tendon transformation experts to advance one whole heaven stage without needing to worry about any sequelae or repercussions. It was especially useful to those who had only just solidified their realm. It would allow them to directly step into the first heaven stage. Furthermore, all of Long Chen's pills were high-grade. With the assistance of the spirit stone formation, the medicinal effect would be complemented perfectly. It would be no problem to advance just one heaven stage. And as for whether it could allow you to advance even more, that would have to depend on each person's talent. When Song Mingyuan and them heard him explain the Yuan spirit pills effect, their eyes almost popped out of their heads. That was practically cheating. The monastery also possessed Yuan spirit pills, but they were all low grade. They were also extremely expensive. Just one being over 5,000 points. Even with the increase in resources, they were unable to buy it. Furthermore, you would need to consume three low-grade Yuan spirit pill to advance one heaven stage. An ordinary medicinal pill could be absorbed perfectly at the first time of consumption. The second time you consumed it, the effect would be cut in half. And that would be halved again the third time. By the fourth time, your body would have formed a resistance to its medicinal nature and it would be essentially useless. Long Chen said that once they completely refined the Yuan spirit pill's medicinal energy, he would see if he had enough time to refine another batch for them. That caused everyone to go crazy with joy and they all entered seclusion. Long Chen then spent another three days to refine a great deal of medicinal powder. Three days later, Long Chen left the monastery with a huge amount of 10,000 beast essence blood. Now that everyone else's matters had been resolved, it was time for him to quickly increase his own cultivation base. Chapter 231 Ling Yunzi's Grand Bet Translator Born to be Ling Yunzi was currently in his immortal cave. Tu Fang was reporting to him, According to your requests, the rewards have already been sent down. The faction competitions have also ceased. Having distributed so many spirit stones, their cultivation bases should quickly soar during this time. Those spirit stones would allow every disciple to keep the spirit stone formation in their immortal caves activated to the max for three months. They were also given a huge amount of points. In other words, during these three months, 
Everyone's cultivation bases should advance by leaps and bounds. But such a terrifying consumption was something the monastery would not be able to handle for long. Originally, they had only had three years' worth of resources. But now they had immediately distributed a third of those resources, causing Tu Fang to worry. If that continued, the disciples might advance quickly. But then once there were no more resources to offer them, their disciples might lose their drive to continue advancing. You don't need to worry. If this trials works out, we'll be able to use our military success to get even more resources from the Supra Monastery. There are precedents amongst the other monasteries, lightly said Ling Yunzi, but Tu Fang was still somewhat worried. Those monasteries are all ranked towards to the top. They've accumulated countless years worth of resources, making them extremely powerful. Probably some of their new disciples have already entered the mid-tendon transformation realm, were unable to compare to them. After all, our monastery is always last, and so we always get the least resources. We've been thrown off far into the distance because we don't have enough resources to raise our disciples. Tu Fang felt a great deal of pressure over that. There were 108 monasteries below the Zhuanshan Supra Monastery. The competition between individual monasteries was extremely intense. Each year, they would have a monastery competition, and resources would be divvied up according to rank. The monastery's faction competition was completely based off it. This was a kind of survival of the fittest method. In truth, the Zhuanshan monasteries were all given their name according to ranking. The first monastery, the second monastery, the third monastery, all the way to Longchen's Zhuanshan monastery. Because they were last, they decided that telling their disciples would be too awkward, and they just called themselves the Zhuanshan monastery. Otherwise, if they called themselves the 108th monastery, their disciples might wonder what that meant, which would be extremely awkward. Absolute last place, that was something they couldn't tell their disciples. Some of the other monasteries might have the power to take the initiative against the corrupt path, but they didn't have their powerful foundations. If they succeeded, then it would be acceptable, and all that would be said was that Ling Yunzi possessed an unwavering courage. But if it failed and too many of the monastery's disciples died, then once the Supra Monastery investigated this, Ling Yunzi would very likely be heavily punished, perhaps losing his sect leader position. So Tu Fang still felt this kind of action was too dangerous. The monastery was already developing very well with many core disciples. There was no need to take this risk. When Long Chen killed Wu Qi in just four moves, I was extremely impressed. Long Chen's invincible Dao Heart and Will are something no one else can match. That's not related to cultivation base but a kind of absolute confidence that came from being tempered through life and death experiences countless times. You've also seen just how terrifying such a will is. It's also why our righteous path disciples find it very difficult to defaturing corrupt path disciples on the same level. It's because we aren't ruthless enough. Not only are we not ruthless enough to our opponents, but we're also not ruthless enough on ourselves. Only those who have the courage to fight all out with their lives on the line are able to survive until the end. Ling Yunzi sighed, looking up at Skywood Mountain which stretched high into the clouds. Yearning appeared in his eyes. Uncle Master's words that day completely woke me up. I've been too conservative, which has affected our monastery's growth. My cultivation base has essentially stagnated for over a hundred years now. I've realized that a problem has occurred with my Dao heart. If a cultivator does not even have the heart to take risks, how could they possess the courage to climb to the peak of the martial path? I've stayed stagnant for far too long. I've already lost my old sharpness. I need to borrow a kind of opportunity to retrieve my old sharpness. An incorporeal will explode it out of Ling Yunzi's body. Even the sword on his back let out a loud cry. Unsheathing it, Ling Yunzi apologetically looked at his sword. Sorry partner, I've made you wait for a long time. Ling Yunzi's sword was incessantly ringing as if it were alive. Now it seemed as if even Ling Yunzi had been unsheathed. His imposing sharpness soaring. He looked much younger than before, resheathing his longsword. Ling Yunzi turned to Tu Fang. Now you should understand why I'm risking this danger. I'm tying my own fate with the monastery's fate. I'll borrow that chance to completely awaken. I've been silent for too long. I need a certain force to stimulate me into once more returning to my old self. So you're betting on Long Chen? Yes. Since I bet once, I can bet a second time. And since my first bet paid off, I believe my second bet will also be worth it as well, confidently said Ling Yunzi. Last time, Ling Yunzi had braved the danger of the backlash from the heavenly deos to confirm that Long Chen was a divergent, 
that had been absolutely crazy, but it had filled Ling Yanzi with pride. Now he would make another grand bet, that was to align the monastery's future with his own, placing them both on Long Chen's shoulders. With Ling Yanzi's old nature, he would not have allowed himself to do that in fear of being infected by a divergence karma. It was impossible to predict what would happen if he did. Perhaps it might allow the monastery to rapidly rise to the peak, or perhaps it might result in eternal damnation. But Kang Ming's words that day had heavily shaken him. Since he dared to bet once, why wouldn't he dare bet a second time? And since he dared bet, he might as well make that bet a bit bigger. He had bet his own fate this time. If Long Chen could succeed in guiding this new generation of disciples, bringing them to shining brilliance in this battle, that would allow his own confidence to grow, resolve the knot in his heart, push him through the bottleneck, and allow him to once more break through. But if he failed, there would be no hope of him ever advancing again in his lifetime. At the same time, the monastery would receive a catastrophic impact. And so this was truly a big bet. He understood Tu Fang's worries, but he trusted in his own God. Long Chen definitely wouldn't disappoint him, and since he trusted him, he would let go of the reins, cutting off all paths of retreat. Tu Fang looked at the confident Ling Yanzi and also ended up emotionally stirred. This truly was a grand bet that was incredibly risky, but if he could pull it off, the benefits were unimaginable. Despite being such a solemn and perhaps even inflexible person, Tu Fang was still moved by what Ling Yanzi said. Tu Fang, start doing some drills with the more powerful elders. Just having a strong cultivation base isn't enough. They're so used to just sitting around. They're starting to rust. We need them to escort our junior disciples, ordered Ling Yanzi. The goal this time was to temper all their disciples' wills and bring out their full potential. They wouldn't just send their disciples to death. If their disciples only encountered corrupt path disciples on the same level, they naturally wouldn't interfere. But if an elder level figure of the corrupt path appeared, they needed their own elders to protect everyone. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a training exercise, but just sending their disciples to the slaughterhouse. Previously when the corrupt path invaded, it was also always agreed implicitly that this would just be a training exercise for their new disciples to fight. The reason the corrupt path would instigate this was because even if their disciples didn't die at the hands of the righteous path, they would die under the hands of their same sect their rules were extremely cruel. The weak only had one fate, and that was to be killed. And so corrupt path disciples all walked a path of slaughter. Although their cultivation bases weren't necessarily that powerful, their wills were much firmer. If it weren't for the righteous path possessing an absolute superiority in terms of numbers, there would be no way for them to compete with the corrupt path. And that was why Kang Ming had looked down on the monastery's method of raising its disciples and cursed that they would just be whetstones for the corrupt path's disciples. Tu Fang nodded and began to select a couple stronger elders as well as law enforcers. They would all make their preparations. During these three months, no one dared to take it easy. After all, this was a major affair that would affect the monastery's future. If some of their disciples managed to evolve into true experts, then they would be able to get a better ranking during the monastery competition. Then their monastery would truly soar. But if there were too many injuries and deaths, that would be a huge impact on the monastery. And so everyone who was to be a part of this exercise took it extremely seriously. Everyone who received a notice from Tu Fang immediately began to get to work. They all left the monastery to prepare themselves. At their level, a couple months seclusion didn't have any meaning. There were many of them who hadn't exercised in so long that they needed to go kill a couple magical beasts to remember the sensation of battle. During this time, Wild and Little Snow were brought away with Kang Ming. That was because those two could only increase their strength by eating powerful meat. That was especially true of Little Snow. His heavy wounds had only begun to heal, and so he needed even more meat to completely heal. Wild had only possessed a dozen third-rank magical beast corpses, which could barely count as snacks for them. They had been completely devoured in just a couple days. Kang Ming had been helpless about it. He stored all his forging equipment into his spatial ring. His spatial ring was large enough to store all the forging equipment in his immortal cave. Then he brought wild and little snow into some wild mountains. He would have to get food for them while also forging weapons. He had already promised Long Chen a weapon, and wild strength had grown so explosively that his current club no longer suited him. Seeing wild strength grow limitlessly each day delighted Kang Ming. Each day he would be extremely busy, either forging weapons or hunting beasts. With Long Chen's medicinal pills, the Heaven Earth Alliance's disciples had all entered a cultivation state. 
secluding themselves to focus on increasing their cultivation base. The news that Song Mingyuan and the other two core disciples had revived their ancestral marks was a huge boost of morale to them, raising their spirits. After they told their factions about the cruelness of the trial, they all promised that they, the core disciples, would forever take the vanguard during the battles. It was just a simple promise, but it truly did stir their subordinates. The fact that they would risk their own lives first immediately fired everyone up. Even those disciples who were still terrified felt that fear in their hearts lessened a great deal. The Zhuangshan Monastery was in a state of preparing for war. Long Chen had even went to Tang Wan'er to once more fly a kite and absorb thunder force. Now he had a whole barrel of 10,000 beast essence blood in front of him. An explosive aura came from this blood. That was all 4th rank magical beast essence blood. 4th rank magical beasts were on the same level as their ordinary elders, making them inconceivably powerful. Long Chen took a deep breath, filled with anticipation. This time it would be this powerful essence blood that would allow him to advance. Placing his hand in the barrel, he began to quickly absorb it all. Chapter 232 13th of Vestige of Blood Condensation Translator Born to be a month quietly passed under this tense atmosphere. The entire monastery was nervously preparing for battle. Everyone within the monastery was focused on crazily increasing their cultivation basis. But there was a certain place thousands of miles away from the monastery. A person was standing at the peak of a bare mountain. Ki surged from his body and the blood within his body surged like a racing river. Loud rumbling caused the entire mountain to shake. A powerful aura surged out of his body, soaring into the sky. Golden light came from behind him, making him look bathed in golden mist. I finally reached the 13th vestige of blood condensation. Long Chen's robes fluttered, his long hair constantly dancing. His blood was rapidly circulating, releasing boundless energy. Lightning flashed as he looked up into the sky, and a will came from within him that wanted to smash apart all of heaven and earth. Currently he had already absorbed all the 10,000 beast essence blood, when he had just advanced to the 13th vestige. All the blood in his body had taken a golden sheen. As his blood circulated within his body, the power that it brought made even him feel frightened. The only regretful thing was that Long Chen couldn't advance into the tendon transformation realm no matter how he tried. It seemed he was still missing something. However, that didn't stop him from being incredibly excited. His physical body had become much, much stronger. Even he himself didn't know just how strong he was now. As his cultivation base grew, the capacity of his Feng Fu star increased even more, storing more and more spiritual ki. And most exciting of all was that his meridians had once more expanded. In fact, they had practically grown ten times the size, allowing him to reach an unprecedented level of strength. Suddenly, Long Chen roared up at the heavens, and the divine ring appeared behind him. His aura immediately exploded out like a volcano, and a pillar of ki soared into the sky. The black clouds above him immediately began to rumble and tens of thunderbolts crashed onto him. Those thunderbolts all landed on his raised arms, and his body was immersed in thunder force. A crackling sound came from his body. Ever since he had advanced to the 13th heaven stage, Long Chen had found that as long as he summoned out his divine ring and his ki soared into the sky, it was as if those black clouds that constantly hovered above this mountain had been provoked and they would shoot their lightning down on him. At the beginning it was extremely taxing for him, but he gradually became accustomed. Each time he advanced, he would summon more lightning to temper his physical body. He found that this was an excellent method. The impurities in his body were all forcibly expelled, and the rate at which his blood turned golden increased. But most exciting of all was that those embryonic thunder force glyphs in his body were becoming increasingly clear. At first they had been vague and fuzzy, but now they were clear and substantial. He would condense his blood, gather lightning, and increase the power of his physical body. He had advanced three times now practically all in one go. Now that he had advanced to the 13th heaven stage, those thunderbolts were no longer able to pose any threat to him. So now he was just focused on absorbing as much thunder force as he could. If you were to look at him from a distance, you would see a figure covered in a rain of lightning. An extremely shocking sight. Long Chen needed to borrow thunder force in order to temper his physical body. Being struck by these thunderbolts here was much simpler than if he had to use his own thunder force to temper his body. In fact, this place was also safer, was faster, was painless now, and energy saving. He tempered his body for three straight days before he sensed his body had reached a limit. No matter how much more thunder force he used to temper his body, it didn't have any more use. Furthermore, 
He realized that the thunder force here was becoming weaker now. Looking up at the sky, he saw those black clouds that constantly floated above this mountain had become much thinner. He knew that he had used up all the power here. This particular place was a special environment. The thunderclouds here had probably been accumulating for who knew how many years, and now he had practically exhausted all of it. Putting away his divine ring, the tempest of lightning also came to a sudden stop. The rumbling from his body faded and everything returned to normal. Long Chen smashed his own stomach with his fist. A loud booming noise rang out, and the rock beneath his feet cracked. He, if I had this much power back then, would I have even had to risk my life against Wu Qi? I could easily smash him to death now. Long Chen was now so strong that if Wu Qi fought with him now, he wouldn't even have to go into a battle state to defeat Chiring him. That filled Long Chen with confidence for the upcoming trial against the corrupt devils. According to the trial settings, killing a single corrupt path outer disciple was worth 5,000 points, killing an inner disciple was worth 30,000 points, and killing a core disciple was worth 200,000 points. That was an incredible opportunity. Back when Long Chen had bought medicinal ingredients at the Zhuanshan Pavilion, he had seen quite a few of the medicinal ingredients for the Aleph pill. But those medicinal ingredients were rare and required thousands of points to purchase. The more expensive ones even required tens of thousands of points. Long Chen didn't have enough points to buy them. And so Long Chen didn't even think about them for now. The medicinal ingredients required to refine the Aleph pill were just too expensive. Furthermore, even if he were to gather all the medicinal ingredients in the monastery, he wouldn't be able to refine the pill. There were some medicinal ingredients that didn't exist within the monastery, but this was still an extremely important opportunity for him. He should still gather as much of the Aleph pill's ingredients as possible. In the future, if he ran into any lucky encounters, he might be able to find the other ingredients. Then he could condense his Aleph star, with both stars superimposition he would be able to keep up the Feng Fu battle armor for even longer. Currently he was only able to use it for a couple moments before it faded away. Most importantly, he still didn't know what kind of changes would occur with the nine-star hegemon body art once he condensed the Aleph star. Just thinking about that filled Long Chen with anticipation. Most of the clothes he had been wearing this time had already been turned to ashes by the lightning. So Long Chen put on some new clothes, looking up at the black clouds that had become much thinner. He smiled. Thank you. The thunder force in his body had become much more solid now. In fact, it was so strong that it shocked him. After experiencing the tempering of this lightning, Long Chen was confident in being able to survive the next heavenly punishment. When Long Chen returned to the monastery, he clearly sensed the atmosphere was much graver. In the huge monastery, other than a couple workers, there was almost no one else about. Most likely they were all cultivating in seclusion. Long Chen arrived at the Heaven Earth faction and found that he was right. Everyone was in their immortal caves cultivating. Their spirit stone formations were pushed to the max as they crazily increased their cultivation base. Although raising the cultivation base like that wasn't such a good thing and would weaken their foundations, they were about to face the corrupt devil trial. In that kind of environment where life and death were separated by just a fine line, their foundations would quickly stabilize again. So rapidly increasing their cultivation base at this time wouldn't cause any problems. The most important thing was that every little increase in strength would give them a slightly greater chance of surviving. Under the monastery's orders, if they didn't dare participate in this trial, then they would be directly expelled from the monastery. They were all cultivators. If they refused because they were afraid of death, then there was no meaning in them cultivating. When Long Chen entered his immortal cave, Tang Wan'er, who had been cultivating, opened her eyes. Long Chen was startled to see how powerful her aura had now become. In fact, it was still rapidly growing. Seeing Long Chen, she couldn't hold back a happy smile, but it quickly reversed and she scolded. Where did you run off to? You left for over a month. I thought you had fled. Long Chen laughed. Ah, I really did flee. But then halfway I just couldn't bear leaving my goddess and so I returned. All you know how to do is talk nonsense. Tang Wan'er rolled her eyes at him. But suddenly she looked at him with shock and confusion. Why does your cultivation base seem so strange? It looks like the peak of blood condensation, but it's also not entirely like it either. How come I feel such a powerful pressure from you that it makes my heart pound? Long Chen pushed his hair back and took an extremely flashy posture, bitterly complaining. You also know that I like to be a low-key and not be so eye-catching, but it's always so difficult. 
As my cultivation base increases with each passing day, my own charm also rises like the eastern sun, my brilliance shining endlessly. Every woman will immediately feel their heart pounding when they see me. Tang Wan'er had been listening seriously at the beginning, but after just hearing half, her expression became one of complete disdain. HMPH. Obviously their hearts are pounding. If they weren't pounding, then they'd be dead. If you don't want to tell me, then fine. Stop being so flippant and glib-tongued. You're the linchpin of the entire Heaven-Earth Alliance. So pay more attention to your image, said Tang Wan'er. What? How is it me? You're the old boss ah. I mean, you're the faction leader. You can't push your responsibility away. Long Chen shook his head. He definitely didn't want to be everyone's focus. The more responsibility he had, the less freedom he would have. He preferred to be free and easy without any constraints. Long Chen, I'm talking to you seriously. Try to be a bit more normal. Tang Wan'er was a bit annoyed and angry. Ever her eyes had turned a bit redder. Long Chen was startled. Promising. Fine. I'll pretend to be normal for a bit. Explain it to me. Tang Wan'er almost laughed. This fellow was never normal. So hearing that almost made her go mad with mirth. Trying to keep her voice as normal as possible. She began to explain. Long Chen. To tell the truth. I never wanted to be the faction leader. I was just forced by my family. The reason the Heaven Earth faction could reach this level is practically all because of you. Although they all respect me. Even I know that it is you who is their idol and spiritual pillar. I can see the zealotry in their eyes. They would give up their very lives for you. Long Chen. For the sake of everyone, including me, I hope that you'll once more help me hold some of this responsibility. I don't want so many brothers and sisters so die to the corrupt disciples because of my failures. Tang Wan'er's voice was close to begging. She knew there was no one else who could be a better leader for the Heaven Earth faction than Long Chen. As long as he agreed to let everyone, that would definitely reduce the casualties and injuries to the minimum. She knew that of everyone, only Long Chen possessed that ability. But Long Chen always acted so sloppy all day. You would never be able to tell just what he was really thinking inside. That caused her to feel a bit uncertain about him. And so for everyone's safety, she had to clearly explain this to Long Chen. She wouldn't care at all about giving up her position to him. Long Chen bitterly smiled and sighed. Although I know this kind of responsibility is just a prison, I still have to foolishly squeeze myself inside. If I walk into that prison, then I'm an idiot. But if I don't, then I would be even worse than an idiot. Fine, I'll be an idiot. Long Chen's meaning was obvious. He would carry this emotional burden. If he refused to accept it, then he would just be a piece of trash who didn't even care about his friends. Sometimes being an idiot was the better choice. Thank you Long Chen. Tang Wan'er hugged Long Chen emotionally. Tears streaming down her face. She had thought that Long Chen would scold her for being too emotional and soft-hearted. Previously he had already given her a warning not to act on emotion, but she still wasn't able to hold back all her emotions. She didn't want to see any of the people beside her die. Now by begging Long Chen, she had dragged him into this emotional mess, and Long Chen knew that this was just a quagmire, and yet he still jumped in. That deeply touched her, and yet it also filled her with both shame and guilt, and so she continued to lightly sob into Long Chen's chest. Long Chen was still hesitating on whether he should be taking advantage of a beauty in his arms when the entire mountain began to shake and a loud shout rang out. Chapter 233 Saw Bear Cry Shakes the Heavens Translator Born to be Brother Long, we've returned. A loud roar that could be heard tens of miles away rang out. That was Wild's voice. Tang Wan'er hastily left Long Chen's embrace and wiped off her tears. Going out to look, they first saw two figures coming over. Those two were Wild and Little Snow. On Wilde's back was a new spiked club that was even bigger than the old one. The old club's head was around the thickness of a bucket. This new one was several times that. The entire club was pitch black and emitted a powerful pressure. After all, a spiked club on its own already appeared like a fierce and terrifying weapon. But most frightening of all was that with each step Wilde took, the earth would tremble. The thick stones that paved the path he was walking on cracked with each step. By the time Wilde and Little Snow rushed all the way up the mountain peak, the neatly paved stone path had become crushed to smithereens. Long Chen could easily tell just how frightening the weight of Wild's new weapon was. If it wasn't, there was no way he could crush those rocks like that. Each rock that paved that path was between 5 to 6 feet thick. Little fellow, I told you to pay attention to your footsteps. Did you even hear me? Behind Wild and Little Snow was Kang Miing. Seeing this path of broken stones, he couldn't stop himself from shouting furiously. 
but he still had a pampering and proud expression despite his anger. Little Snow rushed over to Long Chen like a gust of wind. Nowadays Little Snow had grown even larger, his body at least 10 meters long. His aura was also becoming increasingly powerful. His wounds had already disappeared now, and his white fur practically glowed. You've advanced. Long Chen looked at Little Snow in disbelief. Little Snow's aura had already reached the mid-third rank. The domineering pressure of an overlord third rank magical beast made it so people wouldn't dare to look at him directly. Little Snow rubbed his head against Long Chen's body. Even despite advancing so far, Little Snow was still like how he had been when he had just been a tiny little ball of fur, and was filled with love to Long Chen. Brother Long, let me show you my new weapon. It's amazing. Wild was like a child, waving his club back and forth, causing the land to tremble. It felt as if the air was about to be blown apart, and a huge tempest of wind exploded out. Tang Wan'er was astonished. Just the wind from a wave of his spiked club was ten times stronger than a tendon transformation expert's attack. She was about to go block that gust of wind when Long Chen appeared before her. That terrifying gale of wind thundered like an angry sea. But Long Chen was like a heavy boulder, and no matter how that wind howled, it was unable to move him in the slightest. Long Chen was also awed. After being apart for a month, Wild's physical strength had reached a terrifying level. Just that Gale would have been able to easily break the bones of a tendon transformation disciple. If they were directly hit with that spiked club, they'd be crushed flat. He, Brother Long, how is it? My master made this for me. Wild put down the spiked club on the ground, causing the entire mountain to shake and the stone beneath him to crack even further. Pow! Kang Mian cuffed Wild in the back of his head. He was too short so he had to jump up to do it. Little brat, how many times have I told you to be gentle? Are you trying to tear down the entire monastery? Raged Kang Ming. But despite sounding so furious, he was clearly very pleased. Anyone would probably tell he was actually completely delighted. He was scolding him, but seeing how powerful his own apprentice was made him incredibly proud. As for those broken stones, they didn't mean anything. The monastery had many lazy workers doing nothing to earn their keep. Now they finally had some work to do. With each step Wild took, he caused the mountain to incessantly quiver. Quite a few people rushed out of their immortal caves with alarm, thinking some sort of terrifying magical beast was attacking. They only relaxed when they saw it was Wild and Little Snow, and they put away their weapons. But then seeing that path of broken stones, they were all shocked. When Kang Ming saw those expressions, he became even prouder and more pleased. He might be acting like he was calm on the outside but his acting skills were incredibly lacking. Everyone could clearly tell what he was thinking. Tang Wan'er was surprised by Kang Ming and laughed. This master-apprentice duo were both eccentric suited to each other, but seeing that spiked club in Wild's hand, all of them were filled with respect. But at least you finally called me master for the first time, laughed Kang Ming. Wild would always call him old man, and Kang Ming never cared about that. At least it sounded a bit more affectionate. Now was the first time Wild called him master. So that naturally made him feel happy. Sini. Cough. Uncle Kang Ming. How heavy is this spiked club? Long Chen couldn't help asking. 750,000 pounds. Lightly replied Kang Ming. What? Everyone, including Long Chen, was stupefied. Their jaws dropping. Just a 10,000 pound weapon would count as a heavy weapon. But Wild Spiked Club was 750,000 pounds? That was way too shocking. Looking from Wild's muscles which bulged out crazily and then to that spiked club, they all felt a chill. Just what could you possibly use to block him? Plus, before Wild had switched to this new weapon, he had already used his old one to send Gu Yang flying, breaking both his arms in one blow. Gu Yang's physical body was incredibly powerful. If it had been another core disciple, they probably would have been smashed to death in one blow. Now that he had this even more terrifying weapon, was there even a single disciple in the monastery who could receive just one blow from Wild? They naturally all turned to Long Chen when they thought of that. Perhaps in their entire generation, only Long Chen could possibly block him. He, that old thing was only 180,000 pounds. This one's a real weapon. Wild once more swung his club around a couple times excitedly. So that old club had already 180,000 pounds, and this new one was several times heavier? Everyone finally understood just how terrifying Wild's true strength was. Kang Ming saw how envious Long Chen was and laughed. Long Chen, last time I said I'd give you a proper weapon. He, take a good look. A large saber appeared in Kang Ming's hand. It was almost three meters long, 
and its entire body was golden, almost looking as if it had been made of real gold. The blade was 14 inches wide and 3 inches thick. Lines had been carved onto the blade, and careful examination revealed they were carvings of ancient beasts that were extremely powerful and domineering. Where the blade and hilt met, Long Chen noticed a crystal core. Long Chen's heart leapt, so this was actually a spirit weapon. Long Chen had long since heard that powerful forging masters could carve runes on top of weapons and embed a magical beast crystal core into the weapon. Runic power would draw out the energy of the crystal core, letting the weapon release an incomparably terrifying strength. That was the power of spirit weapons. Spirit weapons had no grades or tires that classified them. Their power was entirely based on the forging master's techniques and the rank and attribute of the crystal core. Long Chen's heart jumped wildly. All he could hear was the sound of his heart pounding away. Kang Ming lightly placed the tip of the sword onto the ground, and let go. With a light sound, people were awed to see that the hard stone beneath it was cut through like tofu, and the saber sunk all the way to the hilt. It's incredibly sharp. Everyone was completely shocked. Just by letting go of it, it was able to easily pierce through these rocks. Just what kind of sharpness was that? This is practically a weapon of legends. With senior apprentice brother Long Chen possessing this saber, he'll definitely be like a tiger that has grown wings. He, now that senior apprentice brother Long Chen has this saber, he'll be able to let us to cut off the heads of those corrupt devils like plucking weeds from the ground. Just thinking about makes me excited. Yeah, I'm about to piss myself in excitement, echoed a person beside him. The fuck? Get away from me. That person who echoed his agreement was immediately kicked away by those beside him. Kang Ming saw that Long Chen looked a bit disappointed. He urged. Try it. Thank you senior. Long Chen bowed to Kang Ming. He gripped the hilt and pulled. But he was odd to realize that his light tug which could easily lift tens of thousands of pounds only caused the saber to tremble ever so slightly. What the? It's actually this heavy. Long Chen couldn't hold back his delight. When he had seen that this saber was only three inches thick, he had thought it would be too light. Now he realized he had been wrong. Long Chen. You're the one who said the heavier the better. I've put up a lot of capital to make this saber for you. If you can't even use it, then I'll have to reclaim and recycle it. Laughed Kang Ming. The last time he had seen Long Chen, he had felt that Long Chen had already reached the peak of blood condensation and would step into tendon transformation at any time. He had predicted that Long Chen's strength would explode by a couple dozen times once he advanced to the tendon transformation realm, and in accordance to his previous strength. He had forged this incredibly heavy saber. This saber had cost him a great deal of time and effort, and the crystal core was actually from a fifth rank magical beast. That was the only fifth rank crystal core he currently possessed. Originally, he had been planning on leaving it for Wild, but Wild didn't have spiritual key in his body and was unable to activate its runes to bring out the crystal core's energy. 1. Thus, he had decided to embed it in this saber for Long Chen. Over a month had passed and Long Chen hadn't broken through to the tendon transformation realm. He couldn't help feeling a bit disappointed. He felt that it was still too early to give this saber to Long Chen, as he would still be unable to use it for now. Haha, <laughs> don't worry, I won't disappoint uncle. Long Chen smiled and placed both hands on the hilt, lifting with his full strength. The stones beneath him all began to shatter. People were appalled to see that even as those stones all shattered, that saber actually began to sink further in. He was unable to pull it out. That scene stupefied all of them. Just how terrifying was this saber? Would it sink all the way to the Earth's core? Ha 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 ha. Good. Good. Long Chen suddenly laughed with excitement and anticipation. His divine ring appeared behind him, and the land burst apart. When he pulled the saber out of the ground, a terrifying ray of Saber Ki soared into the sky. The divine ring and saber shook all of heaven and earth. An endless wave of Ki was constantly soaring into the sky. This was the best weapon Long Chen had ever had in his entire life. A powerful pressure shot out in every direction. Dong 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 dong. Suddenly the sound of a bell ringing nine times rang out, alarming all of them. Chapter 234 Move Out. Battle Between the Righteous and Corrupt Paths. Translator. Born to be when Long Chen pulled out that terrifying saber, everyone was completely awed. At this moment, Long Chen looked like an incredibly imposing god. Dong dong but a bell suddenly began to ring out over and over, causing Kang Ming's expression to immediately change. Something's happened. Everyone hurry to the Zhuanshan Plaza. After saying that, Kang Ming disappeared in front of everyone's eyes. Everyone was already alarmed. In all their time at the monastery, that bell had never rung out multiple times. 
but this time it had rang out nine times. Although they didn't know what that meant, they were sure it must be something major. This is the signal for an emergency assembly. Everyone hurry over. Long Chen put the saber on his shoulder and began to rush over. But after just taking a couple steps, he realized that all the stone beneath him was shattering. The saber was just too heavy. Even he was unable to brace against it. And so the weight transferred all the way to the ground beneath him. Although he didn't know the saber's exact weight, he could tell it definitely wasn't much lighter than Wild Spiked Club. Without summoning his divine ring, he was unable to use it. And even when he did have his divine ring, he would only barely be able to use it. If he wanted to truly be able to wield it normally, that would require him to summon the Feng Fu battle armor. Now wasn't the time to think about the saber though. He put it into his spatial ring and brought everyone rushing to the Zhuanshan Plaza. When they arrived at the plaza, they were all given a fright. All the 30 plus elders of the monastery, a hundred law enforcers, and over 2,000 disciples had gathered here. Ling Yunzi, Kang Miang, and Tu Fang were solemnly standing at the front, looking over everyone. Once everyone arrived, Ling Yunzi explained, Let me give you all a piece of news. This time you won't have to invade the corrupt path's territory for the trial. Ling Yunzi's words immediately caused an uproar. Quite a few people even looked disappointed. They had spent two months going all out to cultivate. The majority of them had already reached the first heaven stage of tendon transformation, while the Heaven Earth Alliance's disciples had already reached the second heaven stage. They had crazily increased their strength all for the corrupt devil trial. They had been planning on using their full strength to cut down the corrupt path's disciples, tempering their own wills, and letting themselves become true experts. Furthermore, the trial's rewards were too alluring. Just a couple of the corrupt path's disciples could be exchanged for an exorbitant amount of points. Those points could be exchanged for more of the monastery's resources, which was the quickest way for them to grow stronger. They had bitterly prepared for two months, all for the trial to be cancelled? That was hard to accept. Seeing their disappointment, as well as some people's fury, Ling Yunzi smiled. This generation of disciples was now much more courageous than previous generations. Most likely those former disciples would have all relaxed when they heard this news. There definitely wouldn't be any disappointment. However, the trial isn't cancelled. In fact, the trial is beginning ahead of time. The corrupt path has already invaded us. Corrupt path disciples have already entered the righteous path's territory, beginning to mercilessly slaughter their way in. All the righteous path's disciples are gathering now. That's because whenever the corrupt path invades us, they will begin an absolute massacre of those innocent commoners. With each passing second, more lives are being lost. So you won't have any more time to mentally prepare yourselves. In a bit, you'll all have to move out. Everyone was shocked. This was far too sudden. They still weren't at all prepared yet. As a cultivator, you must be prepared for battle at any moment. Do you think enemies will give you warning before attacking you? Maybe they'll say hello, wait for you to warm up, and then fight? Fools. Tu Fang couldn't help angrily shouted when he saw those indecisive disciples. This time it's not just our Zhuanshan monastery. The other sect's disciples are all in charge of their own regions. But the battlefield can change in the blink of an eye. So you cannot adhere to those regions too strictly. You'll have to mutually defend and assist each other. There must not be any inner strife. And for this operation, your commander will be Long Chen. All disciples must listen to his orders, said Ling Yunzi. Long Chen was given a fright. He would be the commander in charge of leading them? Then how would he get his own points? If he were to just command everyone, then he wouldn't be able to get anything Novaloon.com seeing Long Chen was about to speak. Ling Yunzi cut him off. The most capable people must do the most work and are duty bound. Long Chen, as a disciple of the monastery, you must do your part. This is your duty. Having such a large hat placed on him, Long Chen had no words to argue with. Looking at Tu Fang. He saw Tu Fang smile at him. Don't worry Long Chen. If your display this time is good, the monastery definitely won't mistreat you. We'll give you the position of a core disciple. Smiled Tu Fang. Long Chen's lip twitched. Was a core disciple position so amazing? Didn't all it mean was that he would be able to get a large immortal cave for himself and his monthly ration would increase a bit? Although his monthly ration wasn't that high right now, he was still living in a large immortal cave and now he could eat King Yu's delicacies every day. If he became a core disciple, wouldn't he have to move out? Long Chen felt the monastery was really being too stingy with him, but he also couldn't retort. It was as Ling Yunzi said, he had a duty to the monastery, 
as if seeing through Long Chen's thinking. Tu Fang continued, don't look down on the status of a core disciple. Previously a core disciple position might not have meant much to you, but the Jiuli secret realm is about to open. That is a space that was left behind from the ancient era. There are countless treasures and inheritances to be gained in there. If you manage of obtain a heaven-defying opportunity, your cultivation base might soar into the heavens. Jiuli secret realm. Long Chen was startled. He didn't know why, but when he heard that foreign name, his heart began to pound. The Feng Fu star at the bottom of his foot actually began to crazily circulate outside his control. Long Chen was completely bewildered. For the Feng Fu star to make such a large movement on its own, did it mean it had a relation to the Jiuli secret realm? You don't need to ask any more questions about it. All you need to know is that only core disciples can enter that place, and the spots are limited. So you have to take advantage of this opportunity. We all think highly of you. As for whether you can obtain a core disciple position, that will be up to how well you perform this time. Tu Fang patted Long Chen on the shoulder sincerely. This was a naked enticement, but Long Chen was helpless about it. For some reason, he had a premonition that there was something he needed within the Jiuli secret realm, and that something was very likely to be related to the Nine Star Hegemon body art. With such a profound feeling, the only thing Long Chen could do was not his consent. Thank you sect leader for your confidence. I'll do my best. Long Chen bowed. This kind of enticement was irresistible, and so he didn't bother arguing. Ling Yunzi smiled. Good. From today onwards, you'll be this operation's commanding general. If anyone dares to not listen to your orders, you have the authority to directly punish them any way you want, including taking their life. Ling Yunzi's words made the Heaven Earth Alliance's disciples extremely excited. They were extremely proud to have Long Chen as their commander. That's unacceptable. But there was suddenly someone who stood up and shouted, causing everyone to look over. He was an inner disciple. Sect leader, we have enmity and hatred with Long Chen. If you give him the position of commander, then couldn't he just do some little tricks to kill us all? Shouted that disciple. He had only just finished speaking when a large hand grabbed him and directly threw him out. That hand's owner was Gu Yang. That disciple was one of his subordinates. After throwing him out, Gu Yang bowed to Ling Yanzi. My subordinate was disrespectful. Please give me your punishment sect leader. Ling Yunzi didn't react much, not displaying any displeasure. He curiously asked, Do you have anything you want to say? Gu Yang shook his head. I have nothing good to say. I am convinced that with Long Chen's character, he wouldn't do anything like that. He would disdain using such tricks. Gu Yang's words startled everyone, including Long Chen. Who would have thought Gu Yang would say something like that? Correct. We have no objection to having Long Chen as commander. Surprisingly, even Lai Kian Chang walked out to speak. That puzzled many people. They clearly had a deep enmity between them. Were they not afraid of Long Chen making life hard for them? This time they would be facing those incredibly cruel corrupt path disciples. Long Chen could make a single order that would place them in extreme danger. Not bad. Not bad. Ling Yunzi nodded with a bit of praise. But just how few people realized the real reason why Gu Yang and Lai Kian Chang were so magnanimous? Long Chen's strength had reached the point where even his enemies were convinced by his power, and even his opponents didn't have the slightest bit of doubt about his character and morals. Boss, that disciple who had been thrown out panicked. He was about to say something when Gu Yang waved his hand to cut him off. Instead, he turned to Long Chen. Can I fight shoulder to shoulder on the battlefield with you? Gu Yang asked of Long Chen. Long Chen looked at Gu Yang and smiled slightly. If you are willing to give your back to me, then I naturally won't betray your trust. Gu Yang suddenly laughed heartily. Good. Then my life will be in your hands. Everyone's hearts shook. None of them had thought Gu Yang would lower his head to Long Chen, and so publicly as well. Lai Kian Chang wanted to say something as well, but even after a long time, he couldn't bring himself to do it. Although he definitely supported Long Chen. He couldn't bring himself to lower his face like that. He sighed, unable to be as magnanimous as Gu Yang. Long Chen looked over everyone. The previous grudges of the monastery are all over now. I'm sure you all know what kind of person I am. As long as you don't betray me, then I, Long Chen, am willing to bleed even my last drop of blood for any one of you. The ones we're facing are the cruel corrupt path's disciples. I can't promise that every one of you will be able to survive but I can promise you that at the most dangerous times, I will definitely be at the very front to face them. He didn't give them an impassioned speech. He only gave them a simple promise.
but that simple promise struck like a hammer at the core of people's hearts, and that caused all of them to stir, their blood surging. Song Mingguan, Li Qi, and the other core disciples all felt as if their blood was boiling, wanting to immediately go kill their enemies. Tang Wan'er looked at Long Chen with complete worship. When Long Chen was actually serious, he was a hero capable of supporting both heaven and earth. She liked this Long Chen, the real Long Chen who was worthy of worship. Ling Yunzi smiled. Long Chen really was a natural-born leader. He didn't even need to waste any effort to immediately raise everyone's morale. Ling Yunzi waved his hand, and hundreds of huge flying magical beasts flew over, descending on the plaza. They were surprisingly all third-rank flying mounts. Move out. Chapter 235 Kill. Translator. Born to be Long Chen and the core disciples were gathered atop one huge flying magical beast. Long Chen took out an animal hide page and pointed to a spot. This time the corrupt path has invaded us from here. Their invasion occurred 18 hours ago, and with our current flying speed, it should take us around 6 hours to get there. The corrupt path's disciples are incredibly bloodthirsty, and will slaughter the innocent commoners as a kind of trial. In a bit, once we arrive, we don't have any time to adjust ourselves. Each moment we wait, countless commoners are dying. Novaloon.com they nodded. This time it had happened too suddenly, and they hadn't had the slightest time to prepare. Originally they should have been the ones to initiate it, but the result was that their enemy had already taken the initiative. These idiots from the corrupt path. Just what are they thinking? Why are they so evil? Do they not care about the lives of others? Li Qi couldn't help but hatefully exclaim. The others also didn't understand. Even the experts from the corrupt path still had to have a mother and a father who raised them. How could they be so devoid of any humanity? Long Chen replied, You just don't understand what they're thinking. The people from the corrupt path have their own belief and conviction. Their belief is very simple. Natural selection. They think that a person must be strong, and the weak are just stepping stones for the strong. The weak are just accessories, ornaments to let the strong stand out. And so, the thing they believe in the most is strength. Strength is everything to them. As long as they have strength, they can unleash all their desire without limit, regardless of any morality. How could there be such wicked people? exclaimed Tang Wan'er. They were all humans, but how were their ideologies so different? Long Chen lightly said, that's just because you don't understand how formidable having a belief is. A conviction in a belief means that your whole mind and spirit is devoted. The people from the corrupt path firmly believe that their actions are the most correct. They believe the rules of the heavenly deos make this world a survival of the fittest. And so their actions are in accordance to the heavenly deos. As for our righteous path's actions of guarding and helping each other, that is in contrary to the heavenly deos natural elimination rules. And so they believe we are disrespecting the heavens. And so they treat killing disciples of the righteous path as taking the place of the heavens to punish us. Furthermore, they won't feel the slightest bit of guilt. Killing people is sacred to them, and they are willing to commit all kinds of things we would consider crimes. Even once they die, they believe that since they fought for the heavenly deos, the heavenly deos will bless them and care for them. And so true corrupt path disciples do not fear death much at all. Long Chen's words caused a chill to run through them. They had all heard the corrupt path's disciples were savage and cruel. So this was the reason. They really are a group of madmen. One of the core disciples shook his head. And this is also the reason why you absolutely cannot show any mercy against them once the fighting starts. Don't try to act with some kind of noble character, humanity, forgiveness, or hope of reforming them. That's just foolishness. A foolishness that will cost dearly. Not only will you end up killing yourself, you'll end up implicating those behind you causing them to die with you. That is what it really means to die with your eyes wide open in grievance. Solemnly warned Long Chen. In particular, he was looking at Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu. He knew those two women were more soft-hearted, especially Tang Wan'er. If they ended up feeling pity for their opponents and ended up restraining themselves, then they really would be done for. And once core disciples died, those disciples behind them would have their morale plummet to rock bottom. Don't worry, I definitely won't show any mercy. Tang Wan'er took a deep breath. Long Chen smiled slightly and nodded. Tang Wan'er's soft heart also had its good points. She cherished her subordinates, and for them, she would definitely not show any mercy. Sweeping his gaze over everyone, Long Chen solemnly said, We still have quite a few members here who haven't awakened their ancestral marks. Do you want to awaken them? The hearts of those core disciples began to pound. Previously they had heard that Long Chen had used some kind of secret technique to help Song Mingguan. Li Qi, 
and Luo Kang awaken their ancestral marks, causing them to be filled with envy. But Long Chen had kept that technique secret, and he hadn't shared it with everyone. Now their hearts were pounding with excitement. If senior brother Long Chen can help awaken our ancestral marks, we'd be willing to even do a dog's work for you, excitedly said one of the core disciples. His family had already begun to decline. By his generation, his ancestral blood had already become extremely faint. If he couldn't awaken his ancestral mark, their bloodline inheritance would end with him. The others were also fervently looking at Long Chen. Awakening the ancestral mark was just too important to them, even maybe more important than their own lives. It was a mission their family had given them, and also a kind of glory. I can't help you awaken your ancestral marks. Everything will have to rely on you. Li Qi, you tell everyone about how you guys awakened your ancestral marks. Li Qi nodded and told them about what had happened that day. He didn't admit anything, even telling them how he had felt absolute despair when facing death. Those people listening were dumbstruck. They were just like how Song Mingguan and them had been at the beginning. None of them had thought that this was the correct way to awaken their ancestral marks. Now that Long Chen mentions it, I remember back when I awakened my ancestral mark. It was because of my little sister. I had secretly brought her out deep in the mountains to do some hunting. But we ended up running into a powerful magical beast. I was unable to defeat Chiringit. And I saw that my little sister was about to be killed. At that moment, I felt as if I had gone insane and some unfathomable power burst out of me, and I somehow managed to kill that magical beast. Only later did I realize I had somehow awakened my ancestral mark. Gu Yang suddenly realized why he had managed to awaken his ancestral mark. When you feel your life is in danger, you'll be able to explode with ten times the strength. But when you feel someone precious to you is about to die, you'll be able to explode with a power that surpasses your imagination. To protect is also a kind of belief. It can let you advance without fear of death. So if you want to awaken your ancestral marks, that'll require you to erupt with a power that surpasses your body's limits. Only then will your mind draw out that bloodline power deep within you. But if you have nothing to protect, it'll be impossible for you to erupt with that much power. If it's just protecting your own life, the probability is very low. If you want to awaken your ancestral marks, it'll rely on yourselves. It depends on whether or not you really cherish your companions, whether or not you cherish their lives, explained Long Chen. He had explained it to them as best as he could. As for whether they could succeed, it would all rely on them. Long Chen continued, this time it's a true, bloody battle. The goal of each one of your attacks is to kill your opponent. It is vastly different from when you normally fight. If you can't change your habits, the one to die will be you. And in order to allow as many disciples as possible to survive, It'll require your encouragement to increase their confidence. Each time when the battle just starts, bring out your best display. Use your full force to kill your opponents in as perfect a way as possible. Understood. We understand. We'll do it at all costs. They hastily replied. Long Chen had unstintingly told all of them his secret technique. Those people who still had been a bit against him immediately felt any of their displeasure fade away to be replaced with gratitude and respect. Long Chen nodded. He turned to a certain woman, senior apprentice sister Kiyu, it'll be up to you guys to provide support, I'll keep a group of people to protect you guys, that woman was the healing halls Kiyu who had come to the heaven earth faction at the very beginning to heal their wounds, but at that time, a little mishap had occurred because Lu Chuan had wanted to show off his skills in front of Tang Wan Er, and ended up being slapped in the face by Long Chen, don't worry, we'll go all out, nodded Kiyu. She had brought all the disciples of the healing hall. This was in hopes that any disciples who ended up injured could be healed promptly. One reason was to maintain everyone's peak combat strength, while the other reason was in hopes of reducing how many disciples would end up dying this time. If a disciple ended up taking a heavy, life-threatening injury, medicinal pills wouldn't be enough. But if a disciple from the healing hall immediately went to help, there was a high chance that person could be saved. However, the members of the healing hall didn't possess high combat ability, and so there needed to be some people to protect them from danger. That Lu Chuan has also come. Make sure to tell him that if he dares play any shady games, I'll immediately chop off his head to use as a kickball, said Long Chen. Ki Yu laughed. You don't need to be worried about that. After you killed Wu Qi, he's become completely well behaved. He definitely won't do anything. Long Chen nodded. He wasn't that worried about him pulling any tricks but he had been a bit worried about him not bringing out his full abilities to heal everyone. 
But with Ki Yu to keep an eye on him, he wasn't so worried. On the battlefield, every disciple must carry at least three signal flares. Furthermore, they cannot keep them in their spatial rings, or they won't have time to take them out at a critical moment. And when using the signal flare, remember to shoot them at a slanted angle. If you see any signals going straight up, assume disciples of the corrupt path have stolen the signal flares and have set up a trap. Long Chen continued to explain a large heap of strategies and tactics used on the battlefield. The corrupt path's disciples were all cultivators and not a regular army, and so it wasn't likely for them to know that many tricks, but it was best to be prepared just in case. Perhaps something he was telling them would be enough to save a disciple's life, then his long-winded speech would all be worth it. As Long Chen explained their deployment, the flying magical beasts didn't pause for the slightest rest. Third-rank flying magical beasts were extremely fast and didn't need much rest. A range of mountains was slowly replaced with large plains. There were a couple of small villages there. As they flew over a certain a certain village, they all sucked in a cold gasp. Seeing corpse after corpse, their blood began to boil and killing intent surged out of them. These god MN bastards. Some people cursed through gritted teeth. A village of hundreds of people was now only filled with corpses. There were old seniors who were already white-haired and there were also babies who were only a couple of months old. Not one of them was still alive. Charge forward. Long Chen suddenly stood up and roared brothers. The corrupt path's disciples are just up ahead slaughtering innocent commoners. Today's battle is not a trial, but a true life and death battle. This battle is not for points or glory. This battle is just to bear witness to our hot blood. Use the weapons in your hands to cut off their heads. Slaughter them all. Kill. 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 The scene below them immediately provoked all their hearts. All their eyes were completely red. They were originally nervous about fighting, but after hearing Long Chen's battle cry, they all began to crazily shout, a murderous aura surging through the sky. Suddenly a small town appeared before them. There were dozens of red-robed corrupt path disciples cutting down the innocent commoners with their sabers. The entire town was dyed red. Howls of grief filled the air. Long Chen was the first to jump off the magical beasts directly charging over to the corrupt path's disciples. Kill. Chapter 236 Bloodied Saber Translator Born to be the inside of the small town looked like a scene straight from hell. Dozens of corrupt path disciples were incessantly slaughtering the innocent commoners. The weapons in their hands were covered in blood, but it didn't drip off. Instead, the blood quickly faded as it was absorbed into their weapons. After absorbing blood, those weapons would release an incredibly sinister air like they were bloodthirsty fiends that had smelled something delicious. A greedy desire could be felt from those weapons. Furthermore, each time one of those corrupt path disciples killed a commoner, a trace of bloody mist would be absorbed into their body as well. That blood was like some kind of drug, making them even more excited, and their eyes were filled with a bloodthirsty light. This town only had a bit over 10,000 people. There weren't many cultivators. Even the soldiers were only at the key condensation realm. That cultivation base might as well have been nothing in front of these tendon transformation disciples. They didn't even have the slightest ability to resist. The corrupt path disciples were crazily killing the commoners who were frantically fleeing. But only a small portion of people managed to flee out of the town. The majority of people were all stuck in the town with no path of escape. Heads continuously flew through the air. Blood splashed everywhere and all they could do was let out helpless cries and weeping. In their eyes, these corrupt path disciples were absolute fiends that were completely unstoppable. The adults were tightly holding their children, covering their vision. Even they couldn't bear to watch that cruel scene in front of them, and they simply waited for death. The sounds of anguish filled the air as well as the sinister laughs from the corrupt path's disciples. They all reveled in this kind of feeling. After blocking the few exits, they began to slowly brandish their weapons. Savoring this sensation, those expressions of despair and terror filled them with excitement. You fiends, I'll take you down. A child only seven or eight years old suddenly charged out with a small, wooden sword. That wooden sword was extremely crude. It was clearly just a child's plaything. But that child charged forward in anger with that little, wooden sword at a corrupt path disciple. Little who's Z, come back here. 1. A woman let out a sharp cry as soon as that child charged out. But it was already too late. That child had already arrived at that disciple. That disciple laughed sinisterly. The long sword in his hand slashed out mercilessly onto that child's neck. His favorite thing to look at was a person's head flying through the air. The expressions on those faces delighted him. Blood splashed. Dying that entire child's body red. The reek of blood was nauseating. 
But that child wasn't afraid and continued charging forward with that wooden sword, stabbing it at that corrupt disciple. What shocked everyone was that before that wooden sword touched his body, he split in two. Once the two portions split apart, people saw a figure holding a saber still dyed in blood, his robes fluttering and his hair dancing in the wind, looking just like a celestial god. After Long Chen cut apart that corrupt disciple, he looked at that stubborn child. It was like looking at his younger self who used to play with the wooden sword as well. Good kid. Once you grow up, you'll definitely be an amazing man. With one hand, he threw the child back to his mother, immediately once more charging out at another corrupt disciple. Kill them all. Long Chen's roar shook the nine heavens, and his saber had already arrived at another corrupt disciple. The saber he was currently using wasn't the one Kang Ming had made for him, but something senior apprentice brother Wan had lent him. The one Kang Ming had made him was too heavy, and he wasn't able to use it without summoning his divine ring. Furthermore, it was extremely exhausting to use. Unless he met extremely powerful opponents, he would prefer not to use it. As for these disciples before him, they were obviously not worth him bringing out that saber. Tang Wan'er and the others all jumped off the magical beasts, bringing out their weapons and charging at the corrupt disciples. They might have been a bit nervous before, but seeing the corpses of these innocents, they immediately forgot any fear they had. Rage and killing intent surged out of them. Frigid wind slash. Tang Wan'er started off with a full power attack. The corrupt disciple in front of her was only an outer disciple, although he was also in the tendon transformation realm. There was no way he could block a full power attack from a core disciple. He was immediately cut into broken pieces by a huge wind blade, his blood filling the sky. If it was a normal time, Tang Wan'er would definitely feel uncomfortable with that scene. But today was not the same. Seeing that corrupt disciple's broken flesh and blood fill the sky, Tang Wan'er was filled with an indescribable satisfaction. Just as she was preparing to attack again, she noticed the other dozens of corrupt disciples had already been killed. Get on the magical beasts. We're leaving. Shouted Long Chen. He directly jumped onto one of the flying mounts and the others followed. From the time Long Chen jumped down to when they finished slaughtering them. Only a couple breaths time had passed. Those corrupt disciples had all been killed in a flash. The other disciples of the monastery hadn't even had a chance to attack before the fight ended. But their hot blood was surging from seeing the core disciples fight. So the corrupt path's disciples aren't that much. Everyone's confidence grew. Long Chen and them had killed all those corrupt disciples in a flash. A dozen people jumped off the magical beast as Long Chen let it flying out again. Those people would comfort the commoners and led them to withdraw a safe distance. Those dozen people were the ones who had failed the final disciple trial of the monastery. They had decided to stay behind as essentially workers, and they would be in charge of dealing with the aftermaths of these battles. This battle would not end in just one or two days. For everyone's safety, they needed to withdraw. Long Chen looked at the map gravely. That was just a small squad. We didn't even have any news about them, meaning they weren't worth reporting. In other words, this time the corrupt path's invasion is much greater and fiercer than before. So don't get careless. Don't think that the elders and law enforcers will protect you from any danger. Long Chen, you mean? Song Mingyuan was startled. Long Chen nodded. According to this record, the experts from the righteous and corrupt paths will watch from a distance during these battles. Unless there is danger of complete annihilation, none of them will take action. But even if they do interfere, the other side will also move to block them. Both parties have already fought for countless years without being able to eliminate the other side. That means both sides are relatively even in terms of strength. It seems this time the corrupt path has brought in even more disciples than before, giving us even more pressure. Don't assume that the elders will be able to save you at a critical moment. If the elders try to interfere, the experts from the corrupt path will also interfere, counteracting each other. In the end, you'll still be on your own. Everyone was shaken by that. They had all assumed the elders would be there to protect them during this trial. But now they all realized that Long Chen was most likely right. At that time, none of the elders would be able to help them. It's better for only you guys to know this. Don't let the other disciples learn it, advised Long Chen. Li Qi bitterly smiled. I kind of wish you hadn't told us either. Maybe it'd be better for us to not know too. Long Chen shook his head solemnly. If you can't even handle this little pressure, how will you become an expert? How will you be able to maintain a calm heart while treading the line between life and death? Cough. I was just joking. Awkwardly laughed Lee QI Long Chen turned to everyone. 
Since you've all chosen to be leaders of your squads, you have to be able to accept this pressure. And so you had to know this. Your brothers all trust you. That is a kind of life and death trust. In order to protect that trust, then even if you have to die, you have to die in front of everyone. He, what is there to be afraid of? I, Gu Yang, have long since been wanting to experience how strong the corrupt path is. It doesn't matter how strong they are, as long as they aren't as abnormally strong as Long Chen. Gu Yang laughed heroically, and his last words caused everyone to laugh as well. Of all the monastery's disciples, only Long Chen could suppress Gu Yang. Wild wasn't technically a disciple since his master was someone who was in the same generation as the sect leader. Furthermore, that fellow was only sleeping on the magical beast. Even during that previous fight, he still hadn't woke up. Luckily that fellow's weapon could be stored in a spatial ring. Otherwise even a third rank magical beast wouldn't have been able to fly with it. They once more flew over a small town. But that sight caused everyone's hearts to sink. All the small towns in this region had become dyed in blood. Corpses covering the land. These brutes. I really want to bite them to death. Cursed one of the core disciples. Clenching his teeth. Seeing those corpses of the innocent commoners. None of them liked that feeling. Now you've all seen how savage the corrupt path's disciples are. You've all seen that their only belief is in vicious slaughter. Once we start fighting again. None of you hold back. Ah. But remember to keep your minds this time and not do it like just now. Although it's nice to crush them into paste. But then we won't be able to get out points. After all, we need to exchange their heads for our points. Said Long Chen. Everyone nodded. The monastery's rules was that the points would be awarded in accordance to the corrupt path's disciples' heads. The monastery has the ability to appraise a corrupt disciple's talent just from their head. And they would hand out the points in accordance to their level. Previously in everyone's fury. They hadn't cared at all about those points. Now that Long Chen brought it, that really did make them feel pained. Even a corrupt outer disciple was worth 5,000 points. Those disciples just now had been tens of thousands of points. But they had been wasted away just like that. Continuing flying, they suddenly heard the sounds of killing. They saw an army of tens of thousands troops fighting against corrupt disciples who were crazily besieging them. Corpses were already piled up into mountains there. But even as their fellow troops continued dying, more came to take their place, doing their best to resist those corrupt disciples. Everyone, fight. Looking at those ordinary warriors who were charging forward, replacing their fallen comrades one after another, Long Chen was reminded of his father. His eyes turned red. Following Long Chen's order, everyone jumped off the magical beasts and charged forward. They formed their squads, the core disciples leading them. Then with Long Chen at the front, they all charged at the corrupt disciples. Chapter 237 Soul Attack Translator Born to be the Zhuanshan Monastery has come to assist. The corrupt path's villains will die. Long Chen's roar clapped out like thunder, shaking the land and spreading hundreds of miles. He didn't actually like that style. He would prefer to slaughter his enemies before they even realized what was going on. But this was a chaotic battlefield right now, and those soldiers had to know they were coming to help. This was just to avoid them not being able to tell friend from enemy. Long Chen had only just charged forward when a corrupt disciple charged out and blocked his way. Seeing Long Chen's cultivation base was only at the peak of blood condensation. He laughed sinisterly. GGGnovaloon.com but his laugh was cut off midway. Long Chen had suddenly sped up. Shooting forward and immediately cutting off his head. G your sister. Who has time to listen to you G? Long Chen stored that head that was still locked in an expression of disbelief into his spatial ring. It seemed you could run into idiots like this anywhere. That corrupt disciple had been tricked by Long Chen's cultivation base. Even in death, he still didn't understand what had happened. Everyone retreat. Leave this to us. Those warriors were still fighting all out and dying. They were simply not on the same level as the corrupt disciples. And were quickly being cut down. Even as Long Chen shouted, he charged forward again. A sinister corrupt disciple also charged towards Long Chen. He pointed his sword at Long Chen. Idiot from the righteous path. Listen well. I am he only got half his words out before Long Chen's saber slashed down on him. Not giving him any time to be long-winded. That person was greatly alarmed. He hadn't seen Long Chen kill the previous corrupt disciple. And he was trying to intimidate him by using his name. But Long Chen's saber cut down too fast. And he immediately felt a chill. A strong feeling of death filled him and he hastily blocked. His sword was cut in half, while Long Chen's saber didn't slow down at all, directly cutting across his neck. His head flew into the air, 
I'm not interested in knowing who you are, Isili said Long Chen. He had already charged forward again. After being delayed twice, Tang Wanner and them had already caught up, but they were listening to Long Chen's plan, and they didn't charge forward in a swarm. Instead, Long Chen had become an arrowhead that they were following into the battle. But surprisingly to them, those corrupt disciples didn't panic much at all despite that the monastery's disciples outnumbered them two to one. Ignoring those warriors, they rushed forward to meet them. At the front was an extremely emaciated man who almost looked like a dried up mummy. That man's voice was like sand as he said, kill these righteous path disciples as much as you want. Their easy profit, their blood, their flesh, and even their souls are treasures for us. Kill them all for me. Those corrupt disciples all began to laugh sinisterly, their eyes shining. They looked just like savage beasts as they charged forward. Everyone was infuriated, especially the core disciples. Their eyes were about to spit flames. They were all geniuses blessed with great talent. Other than Long Chen, who else was worthy of them paying any attention to? Being treated as easy profit by this group of corrupt disciples was an absolutely naked insult. Of the people present, only Long Chen's expression remained tranquil without any emotion. He simply charged to the front, his saber sweeping out. Parting wind cut. A huge saw bear key shot out like a dragon's tail, viciously cutting through those ahead of him. Having reached the 13th vestige of blood condensation, not only had Long Chen's physical strength increased, but his spiritual key had also been condensed to its peak. That one saber blow shook the land, and was at least tens of times stronger than it had been in the past. The Saber key that Long Chen shot out now was no longer a simple key, but practically solid energy, similar to Tang Wanner's wind blades. Blood and flesh filled the air as that Saber key shot out. There were over a dozen corrupt disciples who were cut into broken pieces. The smell of blood filled the air. His own blood seemed to be provoked by that scent and began to circulate faster. His killing intent become even denser. His second saber slash cut through the air. The blood of even more corrupt disciples filled the air. Kill. Long Chen's opening attacks were only the prologue. Tang Wanur, Gu Yang, and the other core disciples arrived and crazily began to attack. The corrupt disciples were caught off guard not expecting the monastery would possess so many core disciples. They immediately began to be cut down. How were Long Chen and the Easy Prophet at all? They were even more savage than tigers. It was they who were turned into Easy Prophet. Suddenly one of the corrupt disciples opened his mouth and let out a bestial howl that pierced everyone's ears like knives. Everyone felt a burst of pain in their mind. They temporarily lost consciousness as if stuck in a dream. Soul attack. Long Chen was startled. That kind of attack was extremely bizarre, and outer forces were unable to block it. It could only be blocked with spiritual strength, and a person's spiritual strength varied from person to person. It wasn't necessarily true that someone with a higher cultivation base would have a stronger spiritual strength. Long Chen, Tang Wanur, and Ye's Hikyu possessed incomparably powerful spiritual strength. They could fundamentally ignore that kind of soul attack, but not everyone could do that. Gu Yang especially possessed extremely weak spiritual strength. He immediately became lifeless, almost being cut apart by a corrupt disciple. Luckily Lai Kian Chang had reacted quickly, sending a bolt of thunder force to kill him. However, there were still many people stuck in a dreamland, but the ones who had charged to the front were all core disciples. The ordinary disciples behind them were also ensnared by it. But there was nothing to worry about for them because this particular soul attack wasn't particularly powerful, and would only have an impact for a moment. If they had already begun to fight, then that moment would have been enough to cause a person to die in ten times over. However, the corrupt disciples had been too startled by the core disciples' imposingness and had been unable to hold them off. That was why they had released this soul attack now instead of at a perfect time. At a critical moment, this kind of soul attack was too terrifying. Hundreds of their disciples wouldn't be able to defend against it and would end up dying. Having been impacted by this soul attack, their offense immediately turned sluggish. Their thunderous sharpness was blunted. Wild. Kill that person with the dead person banner. Long Chen knew Wild was essentially immune to soul attacks. He pointed to the emaciated man who was holding a soul attracting banner. He knew that if he called it a soul attracting banner, Wild would probably not understand. And so he called it the dead person flag. Brother Long, can I use my weapon? Wild had been following Long Chen the entire time, waiting for his orders. You can. Smash him to death. Nice. Wild roared and brandished his spiked club, charging forward. All of you die. Wild looked like a giant as he charged forward. 
Everyone saw just how terrifying he was. He was practically a human meat grinder. His huge spiked club immediately shattered whatever it touched, whether it was a weapon or a human body. Close-range fighters at the front, long-ranged ones at the back, cover for each other and move forward steadily, shouted Long Chen. Now that he knew this enemy had such bizarre techniques, they couldn't rashly charge forward. They had to strike them steadily and surely. Just now, over ten disciples had ended up injured. Fortunately for them, those weren't life-threatening injuries. The injured people had already retreated to be healed by the Healing Hall's disciples. That previous battle at the village couldn't even be considered a battle. This was the true start. Long Chen had to control the flow, and he was constantly looking for ways to raise morale. If too many people died or were injured during just this first fight, then their entire troop's morale would receive a fatal blow. Everyone began to push forward steadily. As for those corrupt disciples, they clearly didn't have any group fighting formations. They all fought for themselves. Under the monastery's disciples' steady attacks, they were pushed back step by step, and occasionally one of them would die. To them, the most frightening thing was wild. He had charged straight through their ranks with no one able to stop him. His spiked club would whistle through the air, and every time, whoever was hit would die. In just the blink of an eye, he had charged over to where the emaciated man with the soul-attracting banner was. Long Chen had seen that although that sharp cry soul attack had been emitted by quite a few people, it was this emaciated man's soul attack that was the strongest. If they could kill him, that would make everything much safer for everyone. That emaciated man coldly snorted when he saw Wild charge at him. A bizarre red light appeared in his eyes. That was a secret technique of his sect called the Bewitching Soul Eyes. Anyone with a weaker spiritual strength than him who he looked at would immediately be drawn into a realm of illusions and could easily be killed by anyone. Furthermore, the soul attracting banner in his hand assisted him. It absorbed all the resentment of those who were killed. The stronger a person was, the stronger the resentment that was left behind when they died. And if they were killed savagely, then that resentment would be even stronger. To them, slaughter was its own kind of cultivation. And that was why they had actually been excited to see these righteous disciples. They had heard from their elders and senior disciples that the righteous path's disciples were gutless weaklings that were just cash cows for them. However, now that they had encountered them, they found that they weren't easy pickings at all, but absolute monsters that were crushing them ruthlessly. The emaciated man was startled by how powerful Wild appeared, but at the same time, he was also delighted. Once he killed Wild, then that powerful resentment from him would quickly increase his cultivation base. And then once his cultivation base grew, his secret technique would become even stronger. Then he could kill even more experts. A blood-colored light shined from his eyes. He pushed his spiritual strength to its peak, and a ray of invisible spiritual strength struck Wild. But he was appalled to find that Wild simply raised his huge club and smashed it down on him. What are you looking at me for? I'll smash you to death. Chapter 238 Explosive Crossbow Translator Born to be you dare keep glaring at me. I'll smash you. Wild roared. His immense. Spiked club smashing down on the emaciated man. That terrifying power made the air explode. That emaciated man was horrified. His soul art was his most powerful attack. And he was almost unrivaled amongst the same level. But Wild wasn't affected at all. Space shook as that club smashed down like a mountain. That terrifying pressure told the emaciated man that this wasn't a hallucination, and he hastily fell back. He was a corrupt core disciple with a powerful cultivation base. His strange footwork allowed him to escape in an extremely bizarre manner. No one was able to see just how he had done it. After dodging that attack, he put away his soul attracting banner. Since soul attacks were useless against Wild, he could only use a different move. Just as he was about to take out a new weapon, the land suddenly shook. The emaciated man hadn't expected that even though he had already dodged. Wild's attack still landed on the ground. Cultivators would definitely not do something like that. No matter who it was, they would always leave a little bit of energy in reserve when attacking. If they ended up missing, they would have the power to change the attack. But Wild wasn't acting at all like a cultivator. He hadn't restrained his power at all, and his club had smashed into the earth. That strike was too vicious. The land caved in and the terrifying power caused the surrounding people to fly into the air, including that core disciple. Even the distant monastery disciples stumbled and reeled from the shaking, almost falling to the ground. The corrupt disciples who were closer were stumbling and flying through the air. The emaciated man was horrified. It would be impossible for him to block such power. But as he was filled with shock, 
Wilde had already come charging out. Stop glaring at me. Shockingly, Wilde didn't need to take the slightest pause after such a powerful strike. His spiked club once more smashed out. He hadn't been affected by the shaking of the earth at all. That spiked club was whistling over. The emaciated man was still in midair from being flung up, and he was unable to dodge. He was scared witless. He quickly took out a huge shield and black mist surged out of his body, raising his defenses to the limit. That black mist formed into a barrier around him. It was covered in blood-colored runes. When those runes appeared, a mournful resentment came from it that caused people's hearts to shiver. Blood rune armor. The emaciated man had only just finished setting up his defenses when Wilde's club smashed down. That huge shield was like a flimsy piece of ice, shattering to pieces. In fact, it shattered before the club even touched it from just the wind force around it. Then when the spiked club landed on that barrier formed from his black mist, people were appalled to see it immediately break apart. Not only did his barrier break apart, but even the emaciated man within was crushed by Wilde's club, his blood filling the air. Nice. Seeing Wild defeat Chiringa corrupt core disciple in one attack filled Gu Yang and them with excitement. On the other hand, Long Chen was feeling a bit of pain. His first thought was that 200,000 points had been destroyed just like that. Attack all out. There are still three other core disciples. Whoever wants them better hurry up before they're taken by others. Everyone else just keep fighting steadily, ordered Long Chen. Wild was like a wolf amongst a pack of sheep. He sowed chaos in the midst of the corrupt disciples' ranks killing them left and right. The corrupt disciples' formations had already been disorganized, so now they were in a complete mess. If Long Chen didn't have misjivings about their strange soul attacks, he would already given the order to cut them all down. From the very start, he had seen that there were four powerful core disciples. Now that Wild had killed one, there were only three. Following Long Chen's order, Tang Wan'er, Ye Hikyu, and Gu Yang rushed over to those three core disciples, Lai Kai and Shang. Go keep an eye on Gu Yang, quietly said Long Chen. Lai Kai and Chang had just stabbed a corrupt disciple with his Thunder Force spear. He knew Gu Yang's soul defenses were his fatal weak point. He hastily rushed over closer to Gu Yang. Both parties were fighting fiercely, but the Zhuangshan Monastery's disciples' morale was sky high, and in half the time it took for an incense stick to burn, the majority of the corrupt disciples had been killed. Less than 300 of them remained. Bring the front troops back to rest. Troops at the back, move forward, five people a squad, slaughter them, with victory in sight. Long Chen brought forward the disciples that had been in the rear. The ones in the vanguard were all the strongest disciples, while the ones at the back were weaker. In other words, with them constantly pressing the advantage, the only troops fighting had been those top disciples. Those at the back had yet to have a chance. Now that they occupied an absolute superiority, he needed to let those weaker disciples experience battle. Otherwise the elites would only get stronger, while the weaks would be thrown far off. That kind of result was not beneficial for their total battle power. As the commander, Long Chen's main duty was to raise the total military strength of these disciples. That wasn't what he had been hoping to do during this trial. He would prefer to charge out and fight personally, slaughtering the corrupt disciples as much as he pleased. Unfortunately, he couldn't do that now that he needed to take care of every single person as well as pay attention to the whole battlefield. His saber was still dancing through the air, constantly cutting through the corrupt disciples. But his focus covered the entire battlefield. Tang Wan'er had summoned wind blades all around her, fighting against a corrupt core disciple with a blood-colored longsword. Long Chen shook his head, his expression slightly ugly. He angrily shouted, Wan'er, what are you doing? This is a battle, not a competition. Tang Wan'er's only fighting experience came from the monastery's faction competition that was just a contest over flags. She was already too used to that. Even with her strength, she was still being overpowered by that corrupt core disciple, falling into dangerous moments time and time again. That infuriated Long Chen completely. He had really wasted his previous words. Tang Wan'er's heart shook. Long Chen rarely became angry. Moreover, he had never become angry with her but this time she could see he really was infuriated. Remembering what he had told them previously, she couldn't help blushing in shame. She didn't hold back any longer, and her aura completely exploded out. The wind blades in her hands quickly began to slash down on her opponent. Ye's Hikia was doing much better than Tang Wan'er. Her Isis blades danced through the air, the chilling air forcing back her corrupt core disciple repeatedly. It wouldn't be long before she could kill him. As for Gu Yang, 
runes were lit up all over his body. He roared over and over, his fists flying through the air. His corrupt core disciple was already vomiting blood. Gu Yang's strength went without saying. Lai Kian Chang was constantly killing those ordinary corrupt disciples, keeping a constant eye on Gu Yang. There were finally a dozen corrupt disciples who were unable to bear it. Being massacred by these monastery disciples who seemed more like wolves and tigers had already broken their courage, and they began to fly into the distance. This was no longer a battle, but a one-sided massacre. When they had been massacring others, they had never imagined that this day would come for them. You want to run? Do you think that's possible? An icy smile appeared on Long Chen's mouth. Tens of arrows flew out. In just an instant, those fleeing corrupt disciples all let miserable screams as they were pierced. Everyone looked over in shock to see man with a huge cylindrical-shaped thing on his shoulder. It was over three meters long and a foot in diameter. There were many thin holes on it which were obviously where those arrows had shot out from. He, boss, I finally managed to show off, excitedly cried Guo Ran. Back when Long Chen had been about to be sent into exile, he had given Guo Ran a warning. His talent was only ordinary, and he would need to think of an unorthodox method to make himself stronger. Guo Ran had secluded himself and racked his brain for ideas. He really did not have a single strong point. His aptitude was only ordinary and his spiritual strength was also lacking. No completely amazing figures had ever appeared amongst his ancestors and he had no ancestral blood to rely on. But then, one day, he had gone to the Zhuanchen Pavilion to look over some of their introductions on mechanism and forging arts, and his eyes had lit up. He greatly enjoyed those kinds of bizarre and crafty things. He had immediately asked Tang Wan Er to lend him a great deal of points to buy those tomes. There was a saying that every person had their own path to walk. As soon as Guo Ran opened up those tomes, he had immediately become infatuated, spending every day in his immortal cave studying. An ordinary rapid fire crossbow didn't possess much power, but Guo Ran had improved on the spring mechanisms in this crossbow, making it over 10 times stronger than an ordinary crossbow. But Long Chen was also surprised to see Guo Ran really was devious. He had also made changes to the arrows. The arrowheads were packed with yin and yang sulfur stones. Each arrowhead had one fingernail-sized stone of each type. Once they encountered resistance, the two stones inside the arrowhead would collide and explode. Of course, such a small explosion of the sulfur stones would only have a range of less than 3 inches and the power wasn't so high. From the outside of the body, even a key condensation cultivator wouldn't die. But those arrows would only meet resistance when they hit. In other words, when they pierced through a person's body, if these sulfur stones exploded within the body, then they even posed a fatal threat to tendon transformation experts. Those dozen corrupt disciples who had fled were instantly killed, shocking everyone. Long Chen smiled slightly. That little fellow really did have his own talent. Show off? How come I don't see anything amazing? Guo Ran laughed and didn't take anything from that. Seeing there were more people, he quickly shot out more arrows. Another seven or eight corrupt disciples were killed by him, their flesh exploding. However, some arrows didn't hit their targets, instead exploding on contact with the ground. It's a bit wasteful. Long Chen shook his head. Each time he would shoot out 40 to 50 arrows at once. The ones that missed were all wasted. He, no problem. I've already prepared all the materials and I can make more at any time. Right now is just the preliminary testing. Later I'll modify them and make them even stronger. I'll become an unprecedented, unsurpassable forging master. Proudly boasted Guo Ran. Currently this was just his first test with them in battle. Having tested success this time, he no longer even cared about not having a powerful cultivation base. Other than those core disciples, just how many others were able to do as he had done and kill a dozen corrupt disciples in one attack? He also had even more ideas he hadn't tested yet. His success this time filled him with confidence. He saw a new, brilliant future for himself. 10,000 chilling wind. Suddenly a cold cry rang out and countless wind blades formed in the sky, cutting apart space. Blood spattered. Chapter 239 Mysterious Man Translator Born to be blood splashed through the air. The wind blades that filled the air faded away. The corrupt disciple facing against Tang Wan Er collapsed, his eyes losing any expression. Victory. By the, the time this final core disciple fell, there were no longer any corrupt disciples on the battlefield. This was a complete victory. Only a dozen disciples had been injured, and those injuries were all quickly healed by the healing hall. Those injuries had not been severe, and they were already fully recovered. This battle caused everyone's confidence to sharply rise. 
the corrupt path's disciples weren't so strong. Long Chen, I won. Tang Wan'er excitedly walked over to Long Chen, but she saw there was not even the slightest smile on his face. Instead, it was frighteningly gloomy. Everyone quickly saw that and their cheering came to a sudden stop. They didn't know what had displeased Long Chen. This was a battle with a huge power disparity from the start. Do you think victory is something to be arrogant about? Long Chen icily stared at them. Although they also had close to a thousand people, they only had four core disciples. But how many did we have? Do you think such a victory is worth being arrogant about? Look at how you were fighting. You were basically just playing around. Do you think this is a game? Yu Zifeng, as a sword cultivator, do you think you're very grand? When you run into those weaker than you, you disdain to attack. Do you think ignoring those who follow behind you to charge into the crowd and kill the stronger ones will display how much stronger you are? And as for the other core disciples, do you really think you're unrivaled? Are you all idiots? Long Chen's expression was ashen as he shouted at everyone. How many times have I told you? We are one team? Don't try to be a hero. Do you think no one else knows how take the limelight? If we want to really possess the power of teamwork, then you all need to understand what it means to mutually match with each other. Did my words before fall on deaf ears? You core disciples, the enemies you were facing this time might seem weak to you, but to the disciples behind you, they are a fatal threat. They go all out to protect your backs. But what do you consider them? Cannon fodder? Tools. The core disciples' faces turned red with guilt. They truly had lost themselves in the fight just now. After they had taken control of the situation, they had just gone out killing as much as possible without caring about the disciples behind them. One reason was because of their excitement, but another reason was because of their own vanity. Seeing some of the other core disciples showing off how powerful they were, they were unwilling to fall behind. At the beginning, they had still maintained the formation, but as they killed more and more, they began to fight for themselves. Forgetting all about Long Chen's deployment, many of the core disciples lowered their heads. Long Chen had already told them that if they wanted to awaken their ancestral marks, they had to have something precious in their hearts. But just now they had completely forgotten about what he had said. Their hearts had only held themselves. They stared at the ground in shame as Long Chen berated them. And you, Tang Wan'er, let me ask you, if you had gone all out in that fight, do you think he would have lasted more than 10 exchanges with you? Long Chen's fury had yet to run out. Tang Wan'er stiffened. This was the first time Long Chen had become angry with her, causing her to feel wronged. I, Tang Wan'er was about to argue, but she was sobbing too hard to say anything. She bit her lip, unable to speak. King Yu's heart hurt seeing Tang Wan'er like that, and she gave Long Chen a look, but Long Chen acted as if he didn't see it. Let me tell you then, if you had fought with your full strength, he absolutely wouldn't have lasted more than seven exchanges but you exchanged almost 50 blows before you managed to kill him. Are you excited about such an achievement? Do you know? Acting in that way will cause the entire group to enter danger. If that corrupt disciple had had a one-time, vicious technique or treasure, then maybe you would have been able to escape with your life, but you would have caused all those behind you to die. Do you understand? How many times have I said that this isn't a competition? The goal is always to kill your opponents. You have to use as few moves to kill them as fast as possible. And you too. Yes Hikyu. Gu Yang. You still aren't ruthless enough. You clearly had several opportunities to kill your opponents. But you didn't dare risk the danger and wasted those precious chances. When two equal opponents fight. The braver one wins. If you are afraid of death. Just give up cultivating. Why bother participating in the battles between the righteous and corrupt paths? Are you trying to be a whetstone for others? Why was I able to kill Wu Qi who had a higher cultivation base and was stronger than me? That was because I dared risk my life, while he didn't. The more you fear death, the more likely the one to die will be you. That's why he is dead while I am still alive, standing here and scolding you. Today, you've really all disappointed me. If you act like this next time as well, then all of you can get lost. I'll just go out to slaughter them with my two brothers. That'll save me from being so infuriated watching you. Even after scolding them for this time, his anger still didn't fade. He had clearly explained this all extremely clearly on the way here. But as soon as the battle started, they forgot everything. Anyone would be angry. The one who disappointed him the most was Tang Wan'er. She had such a powerful strength, but she was unable to bring herself to wield it. He really couldn't understand that. Long Chen, I was wrong. Don't be mad. I understand. Can you forgive me? 
Tang Wan'er stuttered through tears. She had realized that the majority of Long Chen's fury was because of her performance. At the beginning, it had been her who had pleaded Long Chen to let everyone, hoping everyone would be more impassioned with him in charge. Her conduct today had been in complete contrary to her own wishes. She had gravely injured Long Chen's trust. She had her own difficulties. Although she was powerful, she was a woman who hadn't experienced much life and death battles. It was too hard for her to change her fighting style so abruptly. Sigh. Just return to your station. Perhaps you'll only truly understand what pain is when those behind you fall. Then you'll know what the purpose of a battle is. Long Chen took a deep breath, calming himself down. Tang Wan'er bit her lip, returning to her troops. They were all completely silent. Even those ordinary soldiers who had luckily managed to survive didn't dare breathe loudly in this heavy atmosphere. Long Chen sighed. Don't wait to lose something before realizing how to treasure it. Don't wait to lose something before knowing what pain is. Don't wait to lose something before realizing what it means to protect. Let me tell you a cruel fact. In this battle between the righteous and corrupt paths, if even half of us manage to live, that would already count as a heavenly blessing. If you still don't grow up, then maybe it would be better for you to die in the upcoming battles. At least then everything would be over for you. But if you manage to survive without understanding what I'm telling you, then you'll feel remorse for the rest of your life. Do your best now so that you don't leave any regrets. Senior brother Long Chen, don't worry, we'll only make this mistake once. There definitely won't be a second time. Those core disciples all shouted. They had already been wholeheartedly won over by Long Chen. Not only was it because he was powerful, but it was more because of his vision and wisdom that far surpassed them. Long Chen nodded. Now that we've arrived on the battlefield, we can no longer use flying magical beasts. If my guess is right, the elders and senior apprentice brothers are already being held in check by the experts of the corrupt path. Right now, we can only rely on ourselves. These are only the advanced troops of the corrupt path. There will be many more of them who will be even stronger rushing over. Our monastery was extremely close to the battlefields. There are negatives about that, but there are also positives. The negative is that the other righteous path disciples that are supposed to assist us are still en route. But there's also a good thing. He, right now, there's nobody fighting with us overheads. You guys should understand. Seeing Long Chen had finally calmed down and smiled. Everyone's excitement once more ignited. A couple of you come over and cut off those heads that are still intact. Those are all free points. Suddenly Long Chen turned to Wild. Wild, can't you pay more attention and be a bit more gentle? With just one smash of your club, 200,000 points have disappeared. Everyone felt some pain when they heard that. It was all because he was glaring at me. Wild swung his club around, speaking very righteously. Okay, well just pay more attention to your strength in the future. And if we run into anyone strong, try to just smash their lower body and leave their head intact. Long Chen could only helplessly sigh. Although he knew Wild's memory wasn't so good, it was at least better to explain it to him than not. Are there any closed cities around here? Long Chen asked those regular soldiers. Reporting to Great Lord. 400 miles south is Nanli City. That city is over 10 times larger than ours. We don't know whether it has received an attack or not. Respectfully reported one of them. Long Chen nodded and gave them a thumbs up. To use your own lives to protect the commoners inside your city. You're all true warriors Long Chen brought everyone rushing southwards. Other people from the monastery would quickly go to bring those people to withdraw. So they didn't need to worry about it. Their task was to kill those corrupt disciples who were part of the advance squads to invade their territory. They had to reduce the civilian casualty count as much as possible. These advance squads might be extremely hateful. But they weren't actually the main disciples of the corrupt path. They only came from some second-rate powers. The main army was still behind them. These advance squads were simply closer to the front lines. After having been given the order to attack, they were the first to start killing. They were like a pack of wolves unleashed on the commoners. They crazily slaughtered them to temper their weapons and spirits, as well as making progress with their cultivation techniques. The souls of commoners weren't as powerful as disciples of the righteous path, but if the quality was lacking, they could make it up in terms of numbers. These early corrupt disciples all came from weak powers inferior to the Zhuanshan monastery. When the real battle began, they probably wouldn't be able to gain anything, and so they were hoping to use the advantage of their position to quickly get some benefit before retreating to the back. But they hadn't expected the place they had chosen to be so close to the Zhuanshan monastery. They had only just arrived when Long Chen and them caught them head on. 
Since they hadn't had enough time, they hadn't gained much before they were destroyed. As Long Chen brought everyone rushing south, they suddenly saw a huge city in the distance. There were over a thousand corrupt disciples savagely charging forward in front of the city gates. They were only a dozen miles from entering the city gates. Crap, the corrupt disciples are about to enter the city. Everyone was worried. If they entered the city, many soldiers and civilians would be killed. They all quickened their footsteps, hoping to arrive there as soon as possible. But suddenly Long Chen's pupils shrunk. Adopt the city gates, a hooded, cloaked man appeared. Only the lower half of his face could be seen. When he saw those corrupt disciples were about to reach the city, an ancient and multicolored bow appeared in his hands. His right hand lightly pulled back the bowstring. A golden arrow appeared on the bow. Cloud-breaking arrow. A cold and grave shout rang out. Although that voice wasn't loud, everyone hundreds of miles around could somehow hear it. A golden arrow of light shot over towards the corrupt disciples. Chapter 240 Monion Translator Born to be a golden arrow of light shot out. It seemed to split apart space and was like a shooting star as it rushed towards the corrupt disciples. At the beginning, the light arrow was only the size of a regular arrow. But as it flew, it grew larger and its aura became incredibly terrifying. All of heaven and earth shook because of it. By the time the arrow was 10 miles away from the corrupt disciples, it had grown over 30 meters wide. Boom. The heavens shook and the land trembled. Terrifying energy exploded out in every direction. A huge ditch had been dug into the ground. It was impossible to see the bottom. Anyone hit by that light arrow had all exploded. Blood filled the sky. Over half of the thousand corrupt disciples had been killed by that single arrow. As for the ones who had survived due to luck, they were shaken by just the aftershock of the arrow. They were vomiting blood as they tumbled through the air. That one arrow's might shook heaven and earth. The most shocking thing about it was that it had possessed an overflowing will within it that instinctively led to subservience. How? How terrifying. Song Mingyuan and them were absolutely dumbstruck. There had been over a thousand corrupt disciples there. That wasn't much less than how many monastery disciples they had here. There had also been at least eight core disciples. But that one attack had included all eight of them. That was practically the ability of a supernatural being. Of those eight core disciples, only one had reacted quick enough and brought out an odd pagoda shield to block it. But that pagoda shield immediately burst apart after that attack. The other core disciples had all died. Of the ordinary disciples, only 400 had managed to survive luckily because they hadn't been within the range of the arrow. But even still, over half of them were heavily injured. They had all seen ruthless and fierce scenes, but they had never seen something this fierce. Long Chen's heart was also pounding. He wasn't shocked about how powerful that arrow was. He was shocked because of the will that had been contained in that arrow. That was the first time he had seen an attack containing the power of will. Of everyone present, only Long Chen could sense that. That was because Long Chen's attacks also contained will. The two of their wills were not entirely identical, but there was one part that was the same. Both their wills contained a kind of belief in being unrivaled. In front of that will, the confidence of those enemies hadn't been able to endure a single blow. Those core disciples had been suppressed by that will. In front of that will, they felt despair, as if they were completely insignificant and were unable to bring forth any effective resistance. Although that will could only suppress them for a split second, that second was enough. Run. No one knew who had shouted that amongst the corrupt disciples, but they all began to flee. We can't let them flee. Let's stop them. Seeing the corrupt disciples were routed, the monastery's disciples definitely couldn't let go of such a good opportunity. No need. Long Chen shook his head, stopping everyone. He had only just stopped them when that man at up the city gate smiled icily. He raised his bow slowly, his right hand pulling the bowstring. This time, all of Long Chen's focus was on his movements, and he could see that the instant he pulled back the string, countless, tiny runes lit up slightly on it up his bow. Suddenly, all the energy of heaven and earth was absorbed, and a single arrow appeared on his bow. What a powerful weapon. It can actually absorb heaven and earth's energy. Long Chen was shocked. That was the first time he had heard of such a weapon. Thousand arrows. A single arrow shot out. But en route, it split apart into a thousand rays of light. In front of their shocked eyes, those corrupt disciples were all cut down by those light arrows. Only that core disciple that had survived was able to resist with his powerful cultivation base. Raising his sword, sword images appeared in the sky, cutting apart tens of light arrows. But with the previous attack and this one, his body was already on the verge of breaking down. Blocking that blow caused him to vomit up blood. Most terrifying of all, 
After those two attacks, his courage had been completely broken. He couldn't bring himself to even think about fighting. All he could think was to run. In just a couple breaths, over a thousand corrupt disciples had died, leaving behind only this one, heavily injured core disciple fleeing for his life. That man smiled slightly as he saw that core disciple fleeing. He pulled back his bowstring. A light sound rang out. For some reason, that light sound caused everyone's hearts to tremble. That core disciple suddenly stiffened, his body no longer moving. He then vomited out blood. Within that blood were pieces of his broken organs. After that, he collapsed to the ground, his eyes filled with terror. A bird frightened by the mere twang of a bow. One, all the monastery disciples thought of that expression. The scene before them was exactly the same as that story. Long Chen took a deep breath. That person was incomparably profound. Not only was his combat ability incredibly powerful, but his smarts were also amazing. Those two attacks had completely broken that core disciple's confidence. After doing that, just a simple arrow containing his will and spiritual strength was able to kill a powerful core disciple. It went without saying that this person's strength and wisdom were extremely high. That person put away his bow when he suddenly turned to look at Long Chen. The instant his eyes met Long Chen's, he shook slightly. Long Chen was also looking into his eyes. He could feel his blood flowing faster the instant their eyes met. A huge amount of battle intent soared from within him, giving him a fright. He hastily suppressed that intent. He had actually felt an urge to fight with this terrifying fellow. That was a mysterious feeling. That person was also affected by Long Chen. His cloak fluttered without any wind. He hastily suppressed his own aura. He pulled back his hood and revealed his handsome face. His gaze was electric, and his sword-like eyebrows pointed up. But his chin was slightly wider, showing he wasn't completely grown up yet. His eyes were extremely profound, but deep within there was some kind of indescribable feeling. After revealing his face, he stood with his arms clasped behind his back, glancing up at the sky at a 45-degree angle, his expression lonely as he said, Ten years I wandered with my bow, my arrows causing heaven and earth to shake. The nine heavens, ten lands, and all the universe will revolve around me. Only I, Mo Nian, will rise to glory. His voice was extremely somber, and the cadence that he spoke it with made it seem like he was a true expert. An expert so powerful that it was sad. Combined with his expression and the corpses littering the ground, he seemed just like a lonely expert standing at the peak of the world. That person then jumped off the city wall and began walking into the distance. People were shocked to see that with each step he took, he crossed several miles. He looked as if he were just strolling confidently and at ease. In an instant, he was already 50 miles away, disappearing from everyone's line of sight. After that person disappeared, the city gate slowly opened. A squad of soldiers walked out to probe the situation. They all began to cheer when they saw the corpses on the ground. How domineering. But he really has the qualification to be domineering. He was absolutely terrifying. Gu Yang was still looking in the direction that man had disappeared to. He was completely shocked still. Just that one man with one bow had managed to exterminate over a thousand corrupt disciples. Those incomparably cruel and savage corrupt disciples were killed as easily as chickens by him. Who was that person Long Chen? Asked Tang Wanur. They had all seen him look at Long Chen right before leaving. Furthermore, he had only revealed his face after he had seen Long Chen. None of them knew the reason why. Long Chen shook his head. He was also shocked. He didn't know why, but he sensed a familiarity with that person. It was likely the two of them possessed something similar for him to have felt such a feeling. No matter who he is, at least he isn't an enemy. Long Chen smiled slightly, suppressing his shock. The others all nodded, rejoicing inside. If such a terrifying fellow was an enemy, that would be an absolute nightmare. We don't even know what sect he's from. His cultivation base isn't that different from ours, but his combat ability is so frightening. That person had released some of his aura back while attacking, and he should still be in the early tendon transformation realm. That was the same level as everyone else's cultivation basis, but his strength was practically horrifying, causing their hearts to tremble. Don't think too much about it. A couple of you go over and collect any of the intact heads. We got a pretty good profit because of him. Smiled Long Chen. Everyone shook. Was Long Chen saying that person who had called himself Mo Nian wasn't a righteous path disciple, but a rogue knight? Otherwise, why wouldn't he want those disciples' heads? Those heads could be exchanged for a bounty of points. He was both powerful and mysterious. Long Chen wasn't able to stop his own blood from heating up. Within the same realm. 
He had never met someone who was an equal match for him yet. But once he had seen this Mo Nian fellow, his blood had begun to boil with anticipation. With people like him existing, he wouldn't be so lonely in the future. The battlefield was quickly cleaned up. They found over 700 intact heads, and three of them were core disciples. The rest had all been broken to pieces. There were also some people who had gone into the city to investigate, but all they learned was that Mo Nian had appeared mysteriously out of nowhere. When he had arrived, he had told all the soldiers to close the gates and not to leave the city. As for what had happened afterwards, they had all seen it. Long Chen closely examined the map. This place was called Nanli City, and it was the region they were supposed to protect. They were essentially the vanguard, and their main task was only to guard this place. They would have to wait for further support here. A portion of you guys go help everyone in the city withdraw from here. There was a brief opening here now before more corrupt disciples invaded. They needed all the commoners to withdraw. Once more corrupt disciples came, they wouldn't necessarily be able to protect the entire city. The commoners would definitely end up slaughtered. And by the time further support came, this place would have already become a battlefield. It was necessary for the commoners to leave for now. As the commoners slowly withdrew, the jade tile on Long Chen's waist suddenly warmed. He quickly went to check it, but his expression suddenly changed when he read the new information on it. 